of that. Oh, right, because that, yeah. Right. Join me in the pledge, please. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America. America. And to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, if you didn't already sign in back here in the corner, please do. Uh, we keep track of who attends. Uh, before I get into the meeting, I want to welcome our new administrative assistant, Ashley Zeruba, there. Hello. Second week on the job, so she's getting right into it. So, uh, I'm going to turn this over to Chief Assistant um, McKean in some fire business. Yes, sir. Um, good evening. Uh, the first resolution we're going to do tonight is resolution 24-0821T-001, uh, approval to accept the resignation of full-time firefighter paramedic Lewis Middleman. Um, firefighter Middleman has uh, accepted an employment at Genoa Township. So and he's going through orientation this week, as a matter of fact. Can we correct his first name? Oh, yes. Yeah. L-O-U-I-S. Yes, correct. Yeah. Uh, would you gentlemen like to make the motion, please? So moved. Second. Uh, roll call vote on this one, please. Jackson. Aye. Holiday. Aye. Same. Aye. Okay. Motion carried. Next. A resolution 24 821 T 002, approval to accept the resignation of part time firefighter Zachariah Holderby. Uh, Zachariah uh, chose to move on to different uh, position with his other part time job. Okay. No motion for that. So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor, aye. 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 Motion carried. Uh, resolution 24-0821-T-003, uh, approval to remove part-time firefighter Fred Keyes from the roster. Uh, he has not kept up uh, his responsibilities for required hours per month. Um, Chief had reached out to him a couple times, and unfortunately, we really hadn't even received any responses back. Okay. Uh, motion, please. So moved. Second. All those in favor, aye. 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 Motion carried. Uh, resolution 24-0821-004, approval of employment contract for firefighter paramedic Joseph Contool, who is sitting next to me. <laughs> okay. You have a motion for that, please. So moved. Second. Second. Uh, roll call, please. Jackson. Aye. Holiday. Aye. Trainer. Aye. Motion carried. He's hired. We will swear him in as soon as I finish this last resolution, if that's all right with you. Sure. Um, resolution 24-0821-005, approval of pay increase for firefighter paramedic Ian Shoon. Uh, Ian passed his anniversary date of two years on 8-9 of 24. So this is just a formality of taking him to the next pay step of Appendix A. Okay. Motion, please. So moved. Second. Second. Uh, roll call, please. Jackson. Aye. Holiday. Aye. Trainer. Aye. Motion carried. All right. Raise your right hand, please. I state your name. Uh, just a talk to you. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that I will support the Constitution of the United States? Do you solemnly swear or affirm the Constitution of the United States? The Constitution and laws of the state of Ohio. The Constitution and the state of laws of Ohio. And will faithfully discharge the duties of firefighter paramedic. And will faithfully discharge the duties of firefighter paramedic. At Harlem Township Division of Fire. Harlem Township Division of Fire. In Harlem Township. In Harlem Township. Delaware County. Delaware County. State of Ohio. Ohio. During my continuance in office, so help me God. During my in office, so help me God. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Congrats, Mr. Lord. 
Autograph, huh? Yep. Okay, anything else, Mike? Uh, you want me to do the roof now or save that till later on? No, go for it. All right. Um, I just wanted to report, and I have the invoices for uh, the fiscal officer. Uh, the roof was completed today um, for a grand total of $84,361. Um, that included the roof. Uh, a couple sheets of uh, OSB that needed to be replaced. Uh, I think there were 15 of them. The parapet was recapped and new gutters and downspouts were installed. So um, overall, I said 75,000 was approved for the uh, roof. My understanding that you approved up to another 75,000 for the downspouts and gutters. So that was 150,000 and the the total bill comes to 84,000. We also had one other estimate at one point for over $200,000. <laughs> yeah, so uh, I think Lieutenant Thrash um, did a fantastic job of finding, you know, uh, an adequate company to save the township a lot of money. Uh, yep. So, that was yeah. good looking. Thanks for good job. <laughs> And other that is all I have for the fire department, unless you have any other questions. Not at this time, gentlemen. No other questions. Okay. Okay. We're going to move on. Uh, to, this evening, we've got Dana McDaniel from the Economic Development of Delaware County. Uh, give a presentation. Just okay from here? Yes. Okay. Good evening, uh, members of the Board of Trustees and, and, uh, Arnold Township. I appreciate the opportunity to be here again. My name is Dana McDaniel. I'm currently serving in the uh, as an in the interim capacity of economic and economic development office of Delaware County. Uh, as you may recall, uh, you probably met Monica Connors uh, over the last year or two. She was the former director of economic development, and she moved on to another position out of state back in April. Uh, the county commissioners and uh, county administrator Tracy Davies retained me to assist them. During this transitional period. So I've been there since April, probably will continue to be there for a few more months. Uh, just wanted to get out here and introduce myself and reiterate the uh, focus of the office. So I appreciate a few minutes that you can give me here this evening. So the focus of the Office of Economic Development is to uh, provide uh, business retention and expansion uh, uh, efforts. So we do go out and visit with businesses throughout the county in partnership with local jurisdictions, and we will do that individually where necessary. We do that in partnership also with One Columbus, the regional economic development arm. And uh, we go out to get a pulse uh, from the businesses about their needs uh, relative to staying in the county or in local jurisdictions, what their expansion needs might be and so forth. We also work on attractions. So we follow up on leads provided by Jobs Ohio and um, One Columbus, as well as those um, uh, attraction efforts and leads that we can generate ourselves through our network and connections with the business community, development community, realtors, and so forth, and our, our own sort of Rolodex of contacts that we have, and to try to uh, uh, attract new business and jobs to Delaware County and its jurisdictions. Um, we also work on creation of new businesses and jobs. You may or may not be aware that there is an incubator or an entrepreneurial center in, in Delaware City. Um, that is... Uh, currently going under a bit of a rebranding and reinvention. It's also in partnership with the city of Delaware and Ohio Wesleyan, but it is available to all members of the, of the Delaware community, the Delaware County community. Uh, their, their role is to help people who want to create new businesses and hence new jobs and help them get into the economic or into the entrepreneurial ecosystem within the region, get connected to the regional uh, tech incubator uh, Rev one and also into investment opportunities and things like that to help businesses grow. So just be aware of that. And if you have any questions about that, you know, certainly give me a call. We'll get, get people connected to that. We do workforce uh, in a sense that we um, 
do interact with all the various workforce agencies, be they, uh, uh, again, Jobs Ohio or um, Jobs and Family Services. We also work with the colleges and universities within the region, our local school districts, career centers. Uh, we also pull together any other agencies uh, like the Workforce Board uh, of this region to come together and talk about and try to focus on and understand what the business community's needs are relative to workforce and try to gear training opportunities and funding towards that so that they can you know, get the workforce that they need and train workforce that, that's necessary to help them be successful. Now we do um, site preparation, so we so we do work on trying to locate um, developable sites and trying to work with our partner agencies to try to get infrastructure to those sites so that they can be ready for development uh, should an economic development opportunity present itself. Um, and so we have great partnerships with uh, many of the utilities that serve the serve the county and beyond, as well as the various uh, county agencies that help provide infrastructure, all of whom I'm sure you're very familiar with and have your own relationships with. But anything we can do there to help you or make introductions, we're happy to do that. Uh, economic development incentives is something else that we do, and that takes a lot of different forms. And when I say we do that, we do that not, um, not over top of the jurisdictions here, but we will work in partnership with you if you need any assistance or technical assistance on that, those sort of things. We, we do have three Additional quasi-public agencies that you can access for assistance. One of those is the Delaware County Finance Authority that offers uh, non-tax and uh, uh, non-taxable and taxable bond bonding for uh, private development as well as public infrastructure as well as public facilities. Like if you're building a new public facility, we can just assist you in getting very competitive bonding through that through that agency, which is also a port authority. Uh, they also do sales tax exemption on construction materials, which helps reduce the cost of new development to um, economic development uh, related projects. We also have a what's called a energy special improvement district uh, th that helps provide access to what they call, sorry for all the acronyms, but they provide PACE uh, uh, funding uh, that is access to, to uh, loans, low interest loans, so that people can um, do energy efficiency in both existing and new construction. And that's that's loan program that then is assessed against the property, follows the property. Uh, also, we do, um, uh, we have a community improvement corporation uh, of Delaware, it's called, uh, which actually was very robust uh, quite a few years ago. It's kind of, kind of um, I don't wanna say dissipated, but has not been leveraged a lot over the last, uh, probably last decade. But uh, we have salvaged that community improvement corporation or breathing life back into that because that can do a whole set of things to help the, the county as, as far as incentives and things that, that perhaps the, the Port Authority or the ESIT cannot do. So, uh, so we're racking and stacking those things so that we have the most robust opportunities that we can have to assist our jurisdictions in economic development. So uh, those, are the, those are the few things that we do. Um, and so just know that we're there as a resource for you and to assist you any way we can. I just want to, you know, add that I didn't really introduce my background. I spent 34 years with the city of Dublin, Ohio. I'm a, I'm a former, um, I just retired as their city manager a couple of years ago and um, started a management advisory group with uh, a couple other uh, broken down old city managers. One who is a retired from the city of Westerville, Dave Collinsworth, another who retired from the city of Centerville. And we're assisting communities. And that's how I got to do this position and help with the county. Now, that's not a paid commercial. I only tell you that because uh, we are on a retainer with the county right now. We can bring all that experience with us to help you if there's anything that you need help with relative to strategic planning or anything like that. So just know that we're available to you through the county for a while and happy to do that. Um, what I know about Harlem Township, and I don't know a lot, but I'm certainly impressed with with you all and what you're doing and what you're going to be challenged to keep up with, with all the growth that you're probably going to be facing or are facing. Having been someone who started in 1988 in Dublin, Ohio, as a city of 9,000 people and got to work there for 34 years to see that become a city of 50,000 people. I'm not going to say we did it right, <laughs> but we did it as good as we could. Uh, happy to help you with any of that experience and, uh, and it certainly we'll share with you all the things we didn't get right. So uh, happy to tell you my, my version of the war story related to that. But looking at what you all been doing, I certainly want to say for what it's worth, 
I congratulate you on all the strategic planning and forward thinking that you're doing. It's not easy to do when you're stared, you know, be staring in the face of a lot of development, a lot of development pressure that you have to respond to. But uh, I just encourage you to keep up that effort and, you know, take the time to think strategically about things, set your policies in place. If there's anything we can do as the Economic Development Office in the county, don't hesitate to call on us. Again, not that we have all the answers, we'd certainly share our experiences or get you to other agencies and support, you know, to think through those kinds of things. So we also have like Montrose Group as an example is on retainer with us who has extensive experience in economic development. We may have worked with them in the past and they can also provide uh, through us a little bit of advice and counsel once in a while. So uh, just know that we're here to support the jurisdictions of Delaware County and certainly the Harlem Township. I appreciate the opportunity just to quickly introduce myself and I'm happy to answer any questions you might have. Do you have any questions? I'm trying to rush through all this. <laughs> uh, you mentioned the Montrose Group. Uh, what is that? Uh, they're they're a, they're an economic development consulting uh, company. Okay. So yeah, they've done a lot of work in the county, and we we use them to do uh, help us manage certain programs in the office. Just because we're very short on staff, there's been a lot of turnover in this office, and I'm here during a transition period. I will not be the ongoing economic development director. Uh, the commissioners wanted to take time to sort of take a look at the office. They wanted me to kind of assess uh, the way that the office is doing business, give them some recommendations and uh, work with uh, the Port Authority and the Community Improvement Corporation, and ESID and others, just to try to get a sense of things and give them some recommendations on how to move forward. Any other questions? So your, your office has an economic development plan. We do. we do have a strategic plan, which was adopted late in 2023. Uh, we appreciate all the input that, that came to that throughout the county. <laughs> Uh, that was adopted by the commissioners, I believe it was in November. Yeah. And have you access that online if you're interested? Yes. In that. Have you in the past come alongside townships in helping them to uh, generate an economic development plan? I have not uh, in, in my capacity. I do know that, that many do that. And uh, I know that where I worked formerly, we, uh, we had multiple generations of an economic development strategic plan. But but to your knowledge, the county hasn't done that out of your office. No, no we, we have not done that for jurisdictions. Copy. Okay, thank you. Adam? I'm good. Okay, appreciate the introduction. Yeah, thanks a lot. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, next up, we have Holly Matty, an update from <clears throat> Crossroads. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. Um, just wanted to come and give everyone a quick update. I'm glad to see Daniel McDaniel here um, and updating you on the, with the county's efforts as well. Um, just to kind of piggyback on some of the things that he spoke about. Um, one of my first contracts was actually with Delaware County Finance Authority, and I did work with a number of townships um, through that contract um doing zoning overlays like i've done for you um and then working with the montrose group to back end that with the numbers to create jeds and tips etc so that was under bob lamb's direction um but i had a contract with them for about two years helping them with that stuff um also to piggyback on that the montrose group the montrose group and my firm work together a lot um on different projects um, right now, I counted while I was sitting there um, three or four that Montrose and um, Crossroads are, are both on that project. Um, so we typically write the zoning code and then Montrose will run the numbers um, of what gen will generate, um, what kind of funds will be generated from that zoning. And then that helps us go out to help us find JED partners, help us with the TIFs, um, et cetera. Um, so we've done that in Jersey Township, Union Township. Um, right now, I'm also in Darby Township in Madison County. Um, and Madison County has Montrose on retainer as well, running the numbers behind what I'm doing for um, Darby Township. Um, so that partnership is really strong there. And I know Nate Green and Dave Robinson um, very well. So having said that, um, just wanted to give you an update on uh, where we are in things. Um, as you know, we have um, the three overlay districts that we've already written and are in place. Um, and we are working on 
um, an additional overlay, which is um, the area along Trenton Road um, and then extending down 605 slightly. Um, when we get to Jim's um, uh, update, he'll have um, some maps and things that we're gonna share with you um, to show you um, those different zoning strategies that we are approaching with that um, area. Uh, we are also um, thinking about um, different JED partners. I, I want to I want to take everybody back to when we did the quick strategy guide back in 2022. Um, it was always the intent to move forward with JED tips and um, to implement those through um, to implement the zoning through those economic development tools. Um, so we are. Um, having conversations um, with different communities just to understand um, their feelings for JEDs. Um, so I've had a couple of different um, conversations um, regarding those potential opportunities. Uh, so with that, um, that's kind of where we are on things. I will be at the Zoning Commission meeting um, in September to talk to them about the um, overlay district um, that's all along Trenton Road um, to help get that moving forward um, and um, continue the conversations on economic development. I also want to introduce Megan. Um, she is our newest planner with Crossroads. Um, so I wanted her to come and familiarize herself with Harlan Township because um, there is so much opportunity and uh, work that is taking place up here. Um, she has a um, community, is it environmental or economic first? It's environment, right. economy, right. development, and sustainability. <laughs> it's that. It's, um, so it has all of the different components to it. It's a multi um, faceted uh, degree. Um, so she has that community approach, the economic approach, the um, sustainability approach. Um, so I think we make a good match going forward of. Um, being able to look at a city and regional planning, a zoning perspective through my lens, looking through her lens of environmental sustainability and how that affects the economics of everything as well. Um, so um, with that, I'll open it up to any questions that you may have. Okay, gentlemen. I have a question. Sure. Uh, do you regard the Harlem Township comprehensive plan with the associated appendix, the quick strategy guide, as a strategic plan? So strategic plan can be slightly different from an actual comprehensive. Um, I will say the, the quick strategy guide, the appendix of your comprehensive plan that we prepared, has components of it that reflect a strategic plan. Because we don't talk only about land use, we talk about what you need to grow as a community, administrative capacity. Um, we talk about what kind of revenues you would need to generate in order to um, have a township full-time township administrator to have a full-time planning staff and how to build that capacity through different revenue generating things so that touches on a strategic right. plan um but there are components of what the county is doing the business attraction and retention and those sorts of things that that plan does not address if you were asked to generate a strategic plan for a township, what elements do you think would be different or added to the comprehensive plan plus the appendix that would make it a comprehensive strategic plan? I think you would have to look at a detailed um, analysis of what kind of businesses are attractors to this area, what um, are your business clusters, what do you want to be um, and attract and identify those different things. I think that's where you need to go one step further um, with understanding what your attractions should be. I, I noticed that in Genoa, in their comprehensive plan, which is kind of strategic in its outline, that they have a policy section that kind of defines how that plan will be applied so that they're careful that there's equity and uh, care uh, across their township as they're considering different developers and their plans. And then they have a chapter that's called vision. And they're really doing what you just said. What, who do you want to attract? What what do you want to become, et cetera? Uh, so I think that's a good observation. Yeah. 
Yeah, I think that's a, a thing. We do have, um, with our quick strategy guide, we do have a vision and statement. Yes. So we have that component of it, but I do think understanding your business clusters and your business attraction and all that does, you know, I think that is an important component. Of it. Yeah, so you, would you envision like a, a chapter on, that includes like your economic development plan would be a chapter in that strategic. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Adam. You know, I was going to ask all the same things that John asked you. Um, <laughs> he just taken care of that for me. Yeah. Perfect. <laughs> okay. I think we're good right now. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Lauren, do you have anything? Yes, please. Just introduce myself to the new trustees. I'm Lauren Robinson. I come to these meetings when I can to be a representative for the health district for you, just to provide you with some health updates and like events that we have going on and replenish your flyers out there for the community. Um, but the only thing that we really have to share with you right now is a addiction movie series that's happening at the Strand in Delaware City. Um, the first hundred people to attend each series is going to get um, a free admission. So nice little free event for you all going on next month. Um, and then other part of my job is just if you have any questions or concerns, bring back to the health district. You can use me as that liaison for you. Thank you. Thank you. Lisa. The August 2024 financials, the July bank reconciles up here for signature, the appropriation ledger and status report was emailed and the cash summary was emailed. Uh, approval for the trustee meeting on July the 17th, 2024 with no corrections. Okay, we have a motion for approval. So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor, aye. 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 Motion carried. Uh, approve the warrants according to the payment listing, and the warrants and the payment listings are up there, starting with warrant 13571 through warrant 13588, voucher number 125 2024. Voucher 126 2024. For a total of seventy thousand one hundred and twenty-three dollars and fifty-two cents. Have a motion to approve. So moved. Second. Second. Those in favor, aye. 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 Motion carried. I thought we already did Ashley's bond. I you do know, not approval for it. I'm not sure. I thought we did, but you guys can do it again. It, okay. It's already <laughs> so, done, and it's perfectly not so, perfect. Yes. Second. <laughs> Okay, motion has been moved and seconded. All those in favor, aye. Aye. And I've got one more thing. So right. Today, I got great news from Burnham and Flower Benefits that handles our benefits. Michelle sent that the VSP plan, which is your I plan, no rate increases. Your current rates will remain the same through 2028. Hmm. And I asked if she could do that for the health. He didn't see that that record. He's like, no, unfortunately, I can't. Because Vision's so, the one that's like a buck of pay period, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. That's great. Yeah. In this day and age, yes. And then I rem wanted to remind people about the fraud reporting and training. Some of you still need to do it. Hmm. Please see my email because that has to be done by September the 1st. Right. So Thanks. we're running out of time. Anything else? That's it. Okay. Uh, as far as on the trustee end, we uh, got an email from Rob Platt. Uh, he's uh, representative of OPWC committee. He's asking that we uh, vote for representatives. Uh, I think I forwarded that to you two gentlemen. They have three individuals. Uh, I would move that we approve these candidates for representatives that are second. Second. All those in favor, aye. 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 So we will sign that document here later. Um, 
approve the purchase of a Sims public access account. Um, can I can speak? To you. Yeah, please. Yeah, so the township uses a software program that enables us to get an overhead view of all of our cemeteries and update each plot um, when they're purchased, uh, if someone is in that plot, if an urn is in that plot, as well as all kinds of other detailed information, the deed, death certificate, potentially picture of the, the headstone, et cetera. That's, it's a great resource for ourselves so that we have good records as a township. And the company that we're currently using is offering us the opportunity for an upfront fee of $1,000 and then at a cost of $800 a year to make that program available to the public. Uh, they wouldn't have the ability to, to get in there and edit it, of course, but they could look at information. And that's, I think, a great tool, particularly for genealogists, for family members, uh, to be able to have that kind of access online to the information that we have at our disposal. So for example, I, I know talking with Dave Snyder about America 250, and the, the opportunity to visit revolutionary war graves that are in our township, uh, it would not be a problem to, um, to provide that information to people who are interested in doing it and, and allow them virtually or really to, to have that tour. Um, and so I, I am recommending this as um, a great tool for the residents of our township, and then for our extended family that have long since moved out of the township. Yeah, I'm I'm not so much in favor of it because uh, funeral directors and contractors that sell monuments can view that and come in and maybe pour a footer when we've got a dedicated contractor. We've had trouble with other contractors mm. pouring footers. You probably haven't been aware of that yet. No. The And the funeral directors... Uh, there's been some bad actors on that in the past, I believe. But so I, I people that want to do genealogy or whatever, I think are welcome to come in and um, have a a view of the system or something. But I, I just don't think it's a good thing to open up like this. That, that's my two cents, Adam. No, go ahead. I'm curious the eight hundred dollar yearly. I mean, is that a fee of just hosting the the I portal and website yeah. mm. is there any maintenance involved in, in it i i am not aware of maintenance ashley are you um so i actually was just talking to tim near about something else and i kind of asked because i knew this was going to be yeah. a meeting um one correction is he did look at it and it's um 1500 not the thousand um i guess it's based on size okay um I had these already done up. It was yeah. right before the meeting. So was the number if we do that, we would definitely change the number um, for that. But one thing that he did say is it's completely editable, I guess, for us. Um, so we can monitor what people can see. Um, so if we don't want them to see deed numbers, if we don't want them to see personal notes that we put in there, um, if people have had deeds transferred through death or through family, we put notes in that, in my in my opinion, I don't feel the public needs to see. So um, we can hide and release things that we want them to see. So we get to edit everything on that end. Um, but as far as it having maintenance, he didn't really say anything, but it is a different system than our SIM system. So the system that we use would have a completely different login than like the public systems. They would be separate, but obviously they could see the same cemetery. So the 800, I think is just really to have. Just to have it. Just to have it, yeah. Did they, and I guess for either of you, based on communication with Sims, like did, did, do we know if any other local municipalities are utilizing it? Have we heard any feedback either way? I didn't, I didn't hear anything like that. I don't obviously yeah. have enough historical information like you do based on some yeah. of the trials and tribulations. So, I mean, I can't really speak to that. I think what comes to my mind first and foremost is, while it's spread over a year, eight hundred dollars seems like a lot just to host your website, right. right? Like you can host a website for a lot yeah. less than that. Especially if we would have to do all of the maintenance here, which we're essentially having to do already, just with the maybe lack of public digital visibility. It's obviously right. public knowledge. 
Um, and I guess it, it just it it does open you up to to use your term, Dave, bad actors that might yeah. be interested in looking at what names or who is buried here. But yeah. I don't know that I have enough information to really lean one way or the well, other. Well, I you brought up a good point. I mean, we don't know about other jurisdictions where they offer this service or not. That'd be worth exploring. Yeah, I, yeah. I would I would kind of encourage say kind of get some feedback put from this on hold and gather more intel How about that sounds good can you explain for me one more time your fear in particular that that they will well the one thing is the footer situation because uh we've got a, a person we use yes and he's done a great job yeah. since we've used him and we had a monument sales person that did footers did one and i and the resident was so upset, and it's been a number of years ago, and I couldn't figure out the time because we had another person in place that did a good job, what the problem was. I mean, they were on us about correcting it. Well, come to find it out, it was because it was somebody from the outside put the footer in. We, you know. Just came in behind yep. the scenes? Yep. And did it? Yep. Okay. Yep. So, and that was, it was a fiasco. It was a uh, family that's lived here a long time and they they thought they'd do a package deal with the footer and the monument and uh didn't turn out so well but let me do some more research and let me see if i okay. can dicker a little bit yeah. about the price yeah. yeah okay okay all right uh next item the h uh pf is asking the harlem township communications committee to sponsor a meet and greet with the trustees how should the trustees support the effort um, we talked about this before, and I guess I'm in the weeds now. I forget. I, th I think what we've been trying to determine on this is how it will coincide with the communications committee as we've been spinning that up. Um, because what, what we had discussed, at least I don't remember if it was last month or the month prior, but earlier this year, there had been a, a, a set amount of funds that were established for community communication as it relates to the strategic planning committee. We've determined that those funds could not be used for other sources, right? N or nor were they ever allocated based on the disbanding of the SPC, right? Correct. It was just for printing and stamps. Right. Basically. So we're essentially at square one with that. And yes. where square one is, is that there's not a, an established budget voted and approved upon for that kind of communication other than the constant contact that we have. Is that fair? Is that an accurate statement? Well, it depends. What do you mean for what? For for mailing for outbound communication through mailing for through communications committee. For postage, we have ninety five hundred, and we've used so. Right, because that's established for the newsletter. Well, that was the newsletter. It's for checks because every time I mail out a check, I got to put one stamp on there. <laughs> so. Um, I wonder if maybe this is a situation where we can get communications committee and forum to communicate and collaborate on what those costs would be and see if it yeah. aligns with okay. the existing budget. Okay. okay. And if something separate needs to be assigned to communications committee, then we could bring that to the agenda. Yeah. Just let me know. And if we need to create a separate account. Yeah. Or if you want to separate all these accounts. And tell me how much you're going to use out of each account. You can do it that way too. Bob, does that sound amicable to you, Bob Singer? Because um, I know you emailed in about it. Which way you would you like to go with this? Um, yeah, I mean, you've got the money was in the budget to communicate. I mean, there would be a difference. No, there wasn't cost. in the budget. You well, guys, the the mailing cost. But I would I was going to have to transfer that money into okay. the printing or <clears throat> when that set up the communication the new communications committee wasn't the money no. allocated to that no oh okay i thought it had been no. when that was set up but basically i mean there will be some costs as far as potentially renting the church yep if, if the, uh, yeah i, I think my proposal is that we get the communications committee and the forum just connected to communicate what that is. If it fits within the existing budget, then I don't see any issue why we can't accommodate that because I think this is important. Yeah, as long as, like I said, you guys have to kind of give me an idea of how much you want for the rest of the year and right. then start working on 2025 budget. Yeah. 
So I will, as liaison, I can communicate that to the communications committee. All right. Very good. I have another bullet point in there too, Dave, talking about the email initiative. Yes. So um, as per our resolution last month, we had set aside essentially up to $50 for an additional email infrastructure mm -hmm. expense as far as assigning the .com email addresses. I've been communicating with um, the BZN and, and the Zoning Commission and just kind of looking at how that's structured. Is is Mike here? Mike Kabler? Hey, Mike, there you are. I didn't even see you right there. Um, and so Mike's been giving me a lot of great information. And so and you correct me if I'm wrong here, but I think between the BZA and the Zoning Commission, these are both bodies that consist of five members, two alternates. So we essentially have 14 total emails here. And Mike, per your email to me, it was, it has been previously decided that the chair of each committee has a township.com email address, correct? That's the decision several years ago, correct. Okay. And do you happen to know if um, the BZA has that active? I don't know. The, the same person who Keith, had that Keith account Kenyon. was Jason Blockman. Okay. No. I don't I, know what happened to him after Jason resigned. When Jason was the chair, he had that. When he left, I became chair. Maybe the other got changed. I'm still on the, on the, on the other one. So, okay. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, we need to look at that probably. So I think what it boils down to is we're essentially looking at the need of 12 additional email addresses. And as I understand, and again, both of you correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe that the, the need for these email addresses revolves mostly around um, email communication of approving the minutes of the meetings prior to the next meeting where the meeting, where the minutes are officially approved. Is that accurate? That's certainly uh, a significant use. Uh, it's used every, for our meetings, every time. Mm -hmm. The other use I communicate with all the members of the committee by sending them uh, information uh, when we're doing revisions of the uh, zoning resolution, I get the email sent directly to me, like for example, from Scott Sanders, and then I forward right. the information out to them. So it gets used a lot that way. Sure. Uh, and so, so as far as I'm aware, uh, there aren't a whole lot, uh, there's not, maybe there's none, I really don't know for sure, but it's certainly a minimal amount of use that the members, other than me, do with the public. Yep, that, that would be my assumption too, right? And I think just as Steve Engenbrown had mentioned last month, I think the main focus on those .NET email addresses were to be provide some insulation should any public records requests come up to cover that kind of communication. So herein lies the issue. And, you know, members of the board, like we're not talking about real big potatoes here, right? Like we originally approved $50. If we went ahead and approved another 12 email addresses for these two bodies, it's 96 total dollars, right? Every year. So it's not a huge amount of money. The only thing that I wanted to make sure that we were all clear on is the .NET email addresses were put in place to provide some insulation of private devices in a public records request. If a public records request came through for any of this communication, we would not be able to fulfill it other than via the .com email addresses because the .NET email addresses are not backed up digitally or otherwise. Mm. So that is my concern. Uh, I don't know that that would ever be an issue because I think both of you will attest to that hasn't ever been an issue, but given where we are and you know i want to make sure that we can cover our bases when it comes to that so yeah that's a good point if we're not concerned about another 46 dollars on this potential i would just commute you know make a res make a make a motion that we increase that 50 dollars to 100 dollars. that way carol can assign dot com email addresses with the same structure right like bza one two three four so on so on so forth but that way we have the digital backup of any kind of email yeah. communication <clears throat> so uh, Other than, I don't know how the feelings are. Just one thing. Uh, Mike, was you aware of Sam was checking on the, the grant? And if he didn't, sh on the uh, cyber grant? I am not aware of that. Okay. If he, if he struck out, he was going to refer to Carol on it. So I, and I hadn't heard any more uh, since last week. I can ask Lieutenant Thrash to pass that on to him tomorrow morning. Okay. Yeah, and kind of let us know if it's going to Carol, because uh, uh, Governor DeWine did something for security, a grant that's available, and uh, I referred it to Sam, and I said, well, if that's not working, maybe Carol will be the next in line right. to check into it. Okay. 
and he has the email that came through. So I'm sorry. So the motion to go to what now? Um, you know, you know, at least a hundred dollars. I think we could probably, you know, make the motion at one hundred and fifty dollars just in case, because we haven't addressed any other email addresses that might be necessary in any other the right. any of the other departments. Um, especially once we start utilizing groups and things like that. So I think, you know, unless you, there's further discussion on it, I think my motion would probably be to amend that initial resolution, or at least, I don't know, Lisa, you tell me if we need to make another resolution on it, but increase that additional expense to $150. I would just increase it and vote on it. And it's going to be $100 more a month, right? 150 would be the total, well, 100 a additional to what the uh, resolution was. That's the way I would do it and vote on the district. So your motion does increase to 150 total. Okay. Do we have a second? Second. All those in favor, aye. Aye. Motion carried. Now, does that take care of that? Yes. Uh, I kind of got lost in the weeds there, guys. Okay. We're going to move on to the uh, approval for trustee meeting standard of conduct. Yeah. This is. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, this is a, a a motion that I am making. Um, it, the township has wrestled with public feedback during meetings, and uh, you know that was a matter of contention several months ago. And as we've conducted meetings since then, there have been times that we've set guidelines in the meeting. And uh, what I've learned from uh, the auditor's website is that it's very important for the trustees to pass via motion uh, a set of guidelines uh, to operate by. And so I actually ran these guidelines by uh, the prosecutor's office, one, to understand the process, and two, to get his opinion about the guidelines. And he... Uh, concurred with the process and and was very comfortable with the guidelines uh okay so i you want me to read these uh you can i i wasn't sure if they'd went to it or not because it said the delaware county prosecutor could review something like yeah. so I, I went ahead and said it to him so they have solved it yeah okay yeah and he said it was good okay so i think and i'm going to speak for john trainer here I, that one of the things we've it, by default that we are open to communication, right? Mm -hmm. However, here are the guidelines. Trustees may regulate public comment as follows as deemed appropriate by the circumstances. One, allow or disallow public comment. Two, limit comments to certain times per individual. This guideline may be waived by the Harlem Board of Trustees based on the nature of the discussion. Three, allow public comments on agenda items only. A lot of these are driven by um, the lateness of the hour, the amount of items that are on the agenda, et cetera. Two, trustees may or may not respond to a public comment. Three, speakers are to step to the podium and give their name and address. Speakers are to address their comments to the chair of the Harlem Township Trustee Board. All speakers are to address the trustees in a respectful manner, and the trustees are to respond in a respectful manner. Six, any speakers acting in a disrespectful manner will be asked to discontinue their comments by the chair. Seven, only those individuals recognized by the trustees shall be allowed to speak. And eight, members of the public may submit a comment or question in writing prior to the commencement of the meeting. The name and address of the individual submitting the question should be identified. And so I would uh, recommend approval of these standards of uh, conduct for public comment in Harlem Township. Okay. I've got a question. So Delaware County Commissioners actually did a resolution. I don't know if you guys saw this. Mm -hmm. About a, what? A form that they could fill out for comment. Oh, for this? Yeah. I haven't seen that. So I think we need, if you guys are going to change the trustee, I think it needs to be actually stated like in a resolution. Do they put on the minute. Do the change require that in advance or is that an option in lieu of mm -hmm. in-present comments from the public? 
Well, I don't know. They sent that. It was very confusing. They sent that with the. Um, so this is for audit. public comment before the Board of County Commissioners. Right. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily a Board of Trustees. Well, well, but it's right. same situation. Same situation. Here. Yeah. But they did a <laughs> resolution. And then right there is the comment sheet because they accidentally had it in with this local government. You guys were supposed to vote on they had it mixed in with <laughs> uh, <laughs> so nice I printed it. <laughs> okay, okay. This this gets to a level of detail that I'm sure that we don't want to go to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's this is this I know, is but if you're changing the way deep. the trustee meetings are, I think it needs to be put into mm -hmm. a resolution and into the minutes. Okay. So you're saying process wise. Yes, process. Take this same same uh, verbiage and put it in a resolution. Put it into a resol a actual resolution. Oh, you have changing. A, it, it is phrased in the agenda as a resolution. Okay. If that's good enough for you. It is. Know. Indeed. Yeah. Um, okay, I'll, gentlemen. I'll comment on it saying, like, you know, if you look, I think we have all looked at our fair share of internet and Zoom municipal meetings. Mm -hmm. Um and if you go to most school board meetings or village meetings, city meetings, something like that, you know, they allow three three minutes of comment and then they thank you for your time. I think one of the things that I really enjoy about our community is that we are able to have communication and conversation in both directions. Um, and I would I don't want us to have to lose that, right? Right. So I think all three of us are very much invested in making sure that public comments with aka conversation remain a part of this um these board meetings as long as we mm -hmm. can keep that respectful and productive. So I support this because I think this is probably the spirit of how these meetings have run for, you know, X number of years. And I think right. Dave and, and many others that have been around here much longer than me could probably attest to that. So I think it's great. Okay. So do I have a motion? I move the passing of this resolution. I have a second? Second. Okay. Roll call vote, please. Jackson. Aye. Holiday. Aye. Great. Aye. Aye. Motion passed. Uh, now we have the resolution that we've been asked to consider by the Delaware County Township Association. It's a resolution in support of revising the current local government funding formula for Delaware County. And the Board of Trustees of Delaware, of, excuse me, of Harlem Township, Delaware County. We're meeting in regular session the 21st of August. All members present, whereas the Harlem Township trustees are notifying the Delaware County Board of Tru Commissioners are in support of the fair and equitable local government funding formula and support the revising of the current local government funding formula. The current and now it be resolved that the current Local funding is imbalanced, inequitable to townships of Delaware County. Our own township supports the revised local government funding formula developed by Delaware County Township Association Legislative Sub Subcommittee of Delaware County Board of Commissioners. Now, that is my motion. Do I have a second? Second. Any discussion? Guys, gonna do roll call vote. Yes. Jackson. Aye. Holiday. Aye. Aye. Motion carried. We'll sign that here this evening. Okay. Uh, next item is um, Kendra has been working with Ashley, training her, and. Uh, where are we at on time, hours wise? Is there any time left? I think we have like. Sounds about right. Something like okay. that. I think at the, I think the beginning of the semester. And you like barely got into the cemetery. So we've gotten into cemetery quite a bit, but we haven't touched record retention. Um, there were a few other things on there that. HR. Yeah, HR, we haven't touched benefits. Okay. So. We're, and this is there again, it's a motion to pass 
a bank of 60 hours may or may not be used to continue the training with Kendra working with um, Ashley as, as needed. Our thought was if we could kind of get through everything that we have planned for you know the next couple of weeks. Right. And then if later on something comes up that you know as needed as needed that yeah. way we would at least have that extra bank and wouldn't have to keep exactly. coming to you guys yeah. asking for more time. That sound reasonable. It's a pretty in-depth job she's doing, and there's just there's no book about it. It's just lots of stuff. Lots of stuff. <laughs> um, I will say that for me. So, I mean, how many days were you on before you sent out the first pre-agenda for this meeting? Two weeks. And how much of that two weeks had been spent with with Kendra? say at least a week of it if not more and we've been working on the pre-agenda for i mean days sure and especially I think, since it's my first one you know we yeah. want to make sure it was right um That's, so it definitely it was a process getting all the legal terms and everything else so well, I, and i think you have a strong you know support network here i mean you know lisa's obviously a wealth of information and i know valerie albeit being absent recently and also has a lot of experience doing that job. But I think that the hands-on training time is a testament that's displayed in the pre-agenda that you sent. Like I emailed her and I was like, good job on this. Looks like you've been doing it for years. You know what I mean? So um, I supported, I think the one-on-one -on -one training, you know, from private and professional life, I think is essential to what you're doing. Um, so I would, um, did you motion it already, Dave? No, I did not. I would, I would move to approve the additional bank of 60 hours. We have a second. So I, I want to I'll make a comment. Okay. Um, Ashley uh, has dug right into uh, the cemetery work. Right. And is taking on a number of uh, responsibilities regarding that in the flow. There's a there's a flow chart for how we sell sell plots, how we dig dig plots, etc. And she's really taken ownership of that, and and I think it's been very good. Um, and I recognize this is, uh, there's a steep learning curve here. Mm -hmm. um, Vertical. So, so I, I'm, I'm not going to be opposed to an employee who says, I need more help. And, and obviously Kendra is very experienced and can provide that. My mm -hmm. one caveat is that I think in the future, 120 hours for transitioning employees and bringing them up to speed is excessive. Well, it, uh, granted, it is in some cases, but in this situation, it's uh, it's a big task. I mean, yeah. she's um, doing administrative work, and there's no playbook. Indeed, so <laughs> that, I, that's the problem. I would just hope that as a board, we don't view this as setting a precedent. Right, I understand. I think this is a unique situation, but that it not become yeah. a pattern. No. Okay. And so, saying that, I will second the motion. Okay. Uh, roll call vote, please. Jackson. Aye. Trainer. Aye. Oliver. Aye. Okay. The next item, as you all, all well know, um, last week, uh, Valerie was off with the death of her father. And then this week and next week, um, she's on vacation. Kendra um, stepped in. There was a hearing that was on the desk that had to be advertised, notice of sent. She got that done, and it's going to stay on schedule. And she's um, asking for the um, $1,020 for the three weeks, which is what Valerie gets paid, and Kendra will, is doing the job. So, I mean, we're not out any additional funds. It's just uh, Kendra's filling the void of getting the work done. Um, the, uh, the one hearing she did that by, uh, remote from home by way of zoom and, uh, the zoom worked well, as far as I know, actually the last, uh, there was a hearing August 
fifth, I believe, when Valerie was here, or maybe she was doing it by Zoom. And Kendra has to do those minutes for that hearing to get us caught up on that one also. Uh, so that's where we're at to keep the wheels on the bus on the zoning departments uh, to hire Kendra to fill this void for administrative uh, zoning assistant for the three weeks. That's my motion. Is there a second, please? Second. All those in favor, aye. 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 Motion aye. carried. Now, uh, cemetery, wanna, anybody gonna talk on behalf of that? Uh, Jason, you wanna Guys, we, uh, run with that? Wanna get up at the podium, please. I wasn't prepared for this, fair warning. We have um, actually opened up a grave today, full barrel coming Thursday. We opened up the grave today and then uh, opened up another one for an urn barrel that's Friday. And we have been uh, maintaining up there. We've got the new fence up on Maple Grove side of Francer. I'm sure some of you have seen. It's not completely complete, but the majority of it is there. And we're getting ready to start on the Francer side, depending some other preliminary work. But uh, trying to keep it mowed and trimmed and, you know, looking beautiful is our big thing. Okay. Uh, I guess while you're there, you want to talk about your mini hoe? I could do that. We but are looking into purchasing a mini excavator so we can be more efficient in opening the graves and whatnot. And perhaps I should make a comment here. Um, uh, I've just been working with the cemetery over the past uh, month or month and a half. Can I yeah. Yes. And in the course of this time, uh, when I began, uh, we were having an external contractor come in and uh, dig our graves and uh, really doing a horrific job. And I could show pictures about how they left the grave site um, and, and left not just the grave site, but the area around the grave site. Uh, and our maintenance guys had to go back in and do repair work uh, and on not just a single grave, but on, on more than one. And uh, this, this got us to thinking about uh, bringing this process in-house so that we could take care of our own cemetery and the folks that are interested in um, purchasing plots and and then using the cemetery um and and so this is why jason has been asked to, to prepare this proposal tonight so that we can move to an in-house process in taking care of our cemetery okay so on that note i have gotten four different quotes for different machines that have come in at very very different prices um, we went with Bobcat, John Deere, Case, and all co also a co Cobelco, Case and Cobelco, both out of Southeastern Equipment. And what it comes down to is Bobcat offers the best machine for our use with the size, the horsepower provided, the overall reach. They provide an extended boom that gives us 30 more inches of reach. So if we have to reach over a headstone per se to give that extra reach comparable to where the Bobcat can dig a depth of 12 four, a case can only go 10 foot, a Kaboko can only go 11 foot. So it gives us that extra foot. It comes in as the second highest horsepower, 42.6 horsepower compared to John Deere at 35 horsepower and a Kaboko at 37 with a case at 43.3. But the big one for us is the Bobcat comes in with a footprint of only six foot wide. The John Deere is six six foot seven inches, and the Kaboko is six foot five inches, and the Case is at six foot as well. But it doesn't offer that depth that Bobcat can give us. But on the flip of that, the Bobcat comes in as a standard equipment of forty seven thousand dollars. By the time you add the cab for seven, the extra arms, couplers, the hydraulic needs we need, the arm for grading and whatnot, the whole machine with an 18 inch teeth bucket and a 36 inch 
ditch grading bucket that we hope to utilize out in the streets, whole machine package and all comes in at $72,019.99, where the John Deere alone with one bucket comes in at like $86,000 alone. So it's substantially less for, for for everything compared to just getting a machine then having to add buckets and extra abilities and you you know auxiliary octaves and then what's also rolls into we're gonna need a trailer to haul this machine and, and Bobcat offers a concrete 16,000 pound rated trailer at 14.5 whereas southeastern equipment for the exact same trailer model and all is 16,900. So it's significantly less for the exact same item with the same brand name and all. So all coming together with the machine, the two ditch buckets, everything we need to operate comes in at a total of $72,019.99, like I said, which is every bit of almost eight to 10,000 less than any other machine without a trailer. So we can get three buckets, two buckets, the machine and the trailer for less than what John Deere just gives us a machine for. So our pick is to go with the Bobcat, which if you look at the other form I, I put there, they offer a lease program. If we didn't want to jump right into a purchase of 72 and some some odd dollars, they offer a, a basically a lease to own 24 months, 36 months, 48 months. Rates vary based on when we actually would want to submit that paperwork, but it kind of gives some numbers on a monthly payment if we didn't have the money allocated to jump right in at the, the 70, 72, 19. Well, Matt and I did cemetery budgeting. So we did put that in there. We can also thank the fire department for saving so much money. <laughs> right. Which is a piggyback on that, that we're looking, we're also looking into a truck, which is quite more. Well, are you guys buying a dump truck this year? Because the it, last three years, trustees, in January had voted to purchase one in three years to this year is the three year. Our goal would be to purchase an F550 to utilize in the cemetery to help us do grave opening and closings compared to replacing one of our larger trucks. Okay, well, we have that they're, the they're not technically worn out. Okay. So those are, those are kind of the details I need to know more about to where, because the, the 550, a rough number, we're looking at 100, 140 to 170. I know the bigger trucks are quite much more. I didn't know Fords were worth that much. Well, it's all the fancy. It's all the fancy stuff you put on. No, it's it's and that's that's Dexter for you. Electric vehicle. He got put in the budget two hundred fifty thousand for the dump truck. Okay, I mean I'm down for both. If you want to, cool. you want to spend it? I'll polish it. No, they're saving money, and I'm digging holes. Yeah. So. <laughs> Money. So I just let you guys know. So I mean that's that's conversation down the road. I I okay. I feel the big trucks are not worn out in any ways. They're not they're not nickel and diamond us in any way. So it's it's not a need compared to this smaller truck well, that we can get into the, the cemetery. For backup, sort of. Well, and the 550 getting it with a snow package. Right. If we just get a little little trickle out here and it's nothing major, we can go around the area in a couple hours and be done compared to a large truck that, as you all know, takes up the whole road when we drive down it. We could skiff the whole property with, you know, a load of salt and be be done in a couple, three hours. Yeah. And also, if we get a real, real bad snow and volunteers want to come in and run a non-CDL truck, you're all more than welcome. <laughs> if we're, you know, hour 18 in and Jim's bored at home, he can jump on in and have at it. There you go. So, but I, I think the 550 will be very versatile with, greatly in the cemetery because we could actually back it in the grave sites to get right on where we need to excavate to put the dirt right in the truck to haul it away so we're not making a, a mess and with digging the grave just today luckily by the road it was still kind of a challenge in the larger truck because it's just so tall that you kind of got to manipulate it raise the bed it takes takes some finagling so, but that's hopefully the truck information I can have by next month because I'm still working on on those kind of bids. Can you explain the trainer cost of fourteen? Well, that's supposed to be trailer. Trailer, yeah. okay. Because <laughs> you don't cost that much. I didn't know. <laughs> <gonna be> <laughs> anymore. But with like I said, Bobcat has a trailer at fourteen four, 
Southeastern has it at 69. It's the exact same model, exact same spec, 16,000 pound radian. It's a tilt trailer that'll haul. It's got a four foot stationary that can haul the buckets and everything. And it's, I look at it, it's a one package deal from Bobcat. They can bring the whole unit out, unhook it in the lot. There you go. We're done. Compared to get a trailer from here, get a machine from here. And then you got different warranties and, and things of that nature. What do you plan on doing for storage? We are working into possibly putting a carport behind the maintenance office over there. <laughs> Maybe eliminating some of the uh, the gravel bins and seeing what kind of kind of numbers we need to get some cover for it. And if we can create that, we could take the old graders, the old backhoe, the crack sealer, the chipper, and all that kind of out there that doesn't get used often, store it out behind, lock and key, and then we can have the front doors to put the, you know, the excavator and the trailer right in. Unless you want to hurry up and build a, a new facility. <laughs> That's a million I hear, so, you yeah. know. Okay, but gentlemen, what's your pleasure on the? Did they give you any kind of turnaround time? He said about 60 to 90 days right now, and that was two or three weeks ago when I talked to him. Compared to John Deere, it was six to eight months. Did you look at Caterpillar at all? I did not. Once John Deere or uh, Bobcat's the only one that offers the extend the boom, yeah. which gives us that extra 30 inches at the the footprint and kind of the size we're looking at to stay under that 10,000 pound. So we're kind of kind of going that route. And on the flip, Bobcat offers all their own attachments. Like they have flail mowers, they have brush mowers, they have ditch graders, they have compactors that are all designed by them for their equipment for in the future to utilize this machine more down the road to do road maintenance, culvert replacements, grading, hill, you know, whatever we can do with it, because it's much more versatile than the backhoe. Like I said, I provided some numbers there if we wanted to go with the lease option, but as Lisa said, Matt and them had the money aside. It's that's kind of your call on how we want to jump at that. Or so, we could use American Rescue Fund because we still have money left over and we've yeah. got to utilize that by the well, yeah, he's probably either going to burn it on that or the truck package. Yeah, I mean, we need it's a hundred, almost one hundred and fifty thousand. We need to burn it on something right. this year. Does that need to be a part of the motion where the funds come from? If it's American Rescue Funds, yeah. then yeah. So, so I'm happy to move. Okay. That we approve the purchase of a mini excavator, a Bobcat. For $72,019.99. And that includes the two two buckets that come with it from Bobcat. Well, you got a your package price with the extra bucket and the trailer is $88,426.99. Is that what you're going for with Bobcat? Right, well, the 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 third bucket, which is a cemetery bucket. Yeah. Which is what we need to actually do with the cemetery right it comes in at 19 nine uh, 1953 correct so the the grand old total of the i don't have it in front of me the 88 and 88, whatnot would 4, get 4, 8, we 8, get 8, all that 8, but have all that done taken care of call them tomorrow and get it ordered then go. i would do we have to keep this under seventy five thousand <clears throat> purchase this is being bought on state bid right jason yes uh, yeah, state contract with with state discounts contract. and all the the Sorwell pricing or whatnot. Yes, correct. So I would revise my motion to reflect those numbers: eighty eight thousand four twenty six ninety nine cents ninety nine cents. So second, second. Uh, roll call vote, please. There's no discussion. Jackson. Aye. Holiday. Aye. Trainer. Aye. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Anything Thank else you. you want to report on? on the uh, I can roll into some of the uh, compliments we've had. As as you all know, Hatch Road was uh, quite a disaster there for a little while while the roundabout we got put in. But we've since burned that, patched it, had it tarred and chipped. That's new, good to go. Of course, the fence at Maple Road, we're working on Fancher. We put new certified playground mulch in the playground over at the park which was kind of a big deal and also did the workstations to bring all that up to safety code. We've had uh, Otis completed the second round of roadside mowing last week that we were missed because he's 
retiring, as you probably all know. And then we did some weed spraying as well. And like I said, the big one was the Hatch Road improvements. We got that back up to, I think, good operating order for another couple of years. Yeah, Hatch Road looks good. I came across there the other day. I think it, it turned out a lot better than I anticipated it would be. I called Doug Riedel about what's going on in Montgomery with uh, berm and no berm. So he didn't know. He said, well, they'll be back. <laughs> you won't get paid. Hmm. Uh, we will keep an eye on it. There's one little scuff uh, about in front of the house, first house on the east end, like where they started. And I told him, I said, that needs to kind of buff down. Okay. That's like where they started to paper and stopped it. Started to stop and restarted. Yeah, I don't know if you noticed or not. It's just, I have not, but I think I've only driven it once. Okay. All right. Uh, while you're talking, let's go right into this fence thing. So that leads into the fencing at the cemetery where it was brought up by Mr. Trainer that we we should add some gates on the Fancher Cemetery entrances. One, because they're on that hill and gate those off to utilize the the most eastern entrance to the Barnhard section. So when you're pulling in and out, you're not having to look over the hill, which you can't see. Well, my opinion, I would not gate it. I would highly suggest exit down below in the Barnhart, but not gate Fine. that. You, you got folks that comes there at different times of the day, old folks. They're going to pull up there and there's a gate. They're going to be hanging out there in the road and they're going to get nailed. And I, I don't know. Mike, have you ever heard of a wreck on the hill there? I mean been rare yeah surprisingly not not like you would expect yeah so i'm i'm not real warm and fuzzy about the gate thing well on the on me i don't know you on the other side of that we were we were anticipating gates on the maple grove side because one we go in there and do operational work and we're head down not paying attention eyes in the dirt and i truly believe if we had gates up there that we could close behind us during maintenance operations the incident that happened up there last month would not have happened when that gentleman yeah, lost his we life. We don't know, but that's that's open for discussion, whatever. And the other the other big one was if we wanted to add fence on that eastern side of Maple Grove, yeah, to block off that old access. Yeah, we need to close that off. Probably. So I met with Matt, the property owner. They're in process of rezoning to have that place become a rental shop of some sort, so we could do fifty foot of fence from. The entrance post to the tree line will block that entrance, which comes in at 1,735. Or if you wanted to do 250 foot of fence, which is that whole eastern side, that comes in at 8,675, which I truly don't think we need the whole 250. No. If we just get past that drive to eliminate right. kind of that cut through. Are you open to? having gates that provide the option for opening or closing if you can but i mean working, then you got the other problem is uh i've seen gates and they're not pinned well and they're going to swing around and ding somebody's car and yeah. you can't fix everything <laughs> you know i mean it's whatever uh I did apply for the grant uh, for the okay. cemetery for twenty five hundred dollars with uh, a focus on fencing and fancher. Okay. I don't know how long it'll be before I hear back, but we we'll, you may get a little. I'm not sure. We might get a penance to help us. Yeah, there. there you go. Yeah. We can we can discuss. We could we could talk longer on gates down the road. It's yeah. You know the main the main fence is already approved. I think if we add a little bit of fence on this east side of Maple Grove to get that drive cut off because. That's going to be a commercial facility. Have you got a separate price for that. What do you say, fifty foot? Yeah, the fifty the fifty foot of matching fence is one thousand seven hundred thirty five. And would that serve as a corner post for a gate if there was a gate? I believe so. Where that well, fence would would come off. Have that that corner post upgraded in right. case of case a gate right did happen right. So yeah, I, my my first push is to get that entrance cut off since they're going to change right. that area, and then right. if we if we you know because so it'll be it'll be built to be able we could add gates to it for sure. Okay, that's great. And then we could we could move down the line or okay. 
All right. So the 50 foot of fence would be 1,735. Uh, is that all the expense you need down there then? On that, on that, to, to close off that, that secondary entrance would, would get that closed off. The other, the other resolution there was for all the gates, which have, you have to add a little fence on the north side, which we could wait on because the, the part of the fence is, is new from last year. Yeah. Okay. I don't see a specific resolution for that. The fence addition is it built into 17. I think it's the 1735. They just have a discussion. Yeah, that's, uh, but it's, it's, I think it's built into the next one. Maybe, maybe not. That has the gates. I guess it didn't actually have a number. Wait till next month. Sorry. Wait till next month. Uh, well, it's, it's, it's under that 2500 mark also. There you go. So we could we can kind of go that route and yeah push get that interest closed off before it becomes yeah. public the public utility access. Yeah, you're good. Okay. Anything else? I when will you know about this carport deal? Uh we've just started scratching the surface on that. We've re reached out to one guy who's in New Albany. Okay. He's the closest we've seen that's local. He sent us a uh, digital diagram, kind of check it out, look at it, see what What's we're saying. the dimension. Well, originally we were thinking that first large bin is 20 by 40. Yeah. And it would take up that whole first bin. Right. Which we were out there just yesterday and today looking that we're probably going to have to take down those wooden walls because yeah. I don't think they're structurally sound to hold something, but I haven't looked that far into it, that if we got to take those down, if we bump that section out a little more to get maybe a 40 by 30 ish, 34, then that would basically empty our cold storage out of there yeah. to have more storage available basically the big large eight bin that is not even full anymore basically cut that in half since we have a small bin there and then the other small bins and kind of utilize more space to try to get more storage since we're also going to be looking into getting a truck and and other goodies so we could we could have more room under roof at once rather than multiple buildings down the road okay okay I'm trying goodies I mean, there's a lot going on. There's a lot of things happening in the township. Easy, and, easy. and I'll just say the maintenance has trifolded since what it used to be. And if we're going to be responsible for maintaining it, we're going to have to have, as I say, goodies to do the work. Okay. Good Thank job. You. Take there. a deep breath, Dave. Good, Take a deep breath. Good job. <laughs> I, I just want to, um, you, you alluded to the fact that that you and Bill were in the cemetery during that tragic event last month. And they they were working and they were um, eyewitnesses to what occurred. And as any of us would agree, that's a traumatic event. Um, and then they had to spend several hours there being interviewed by the police, et cetera. Um, and then dealing with that in the days afterward, and, and I dare say that every time they drive to that cemetery, it's going to be hard to forget what they experienced there. And so I, I think it's good for us to remember that. And um, I just commend you for your hard work, uh, their expertise with the graves, their willingness to take on this job in-house and add it to their to-do list um, is very commendable and is greatly appreciated. And I think that you will serve the residents of the township well. That is our goal. So thank you. Be stewards of the people and provide a service that most of the time becomes unnoticed. Linda? Yeah, I just want to make one statement as far as dealing with the cemeteries. And I appreciate the fact uh, I'm down there off and on, not as many times as I should, as far as to have planted some flowers down there. But dealing with the mowing of the cemeteries, I want to commend our maintenance group because we have family in Johnstown and have family in Sunbury, far as in the cemeteries. And especially going into the mowing season, Memorial Weekend, I was at all three, and 
I actually made a phone call to Sunbury because I have person, my, my folks are there, but Harlem Township and Fanshawe Road Cemeteries were by far the nicest presenting in far as being mowed and trimmed. And Harlem Township going unnoticed, but I I truly appreciate it's, and I think the township, you know, I'll parts, tell you it's one of our large priorities. Well myself and Bill were we're heavy veteran believers. You, you we're doing a great job and and with so much going on as far as as John for is in reaching out and what you're doing is tremendous. And I like I said, I made a phone call to Sunbury because I was very unhappy. I mean, I saw some people that had used their own weed whackers and stuff up at Sunbury, but that wasn't necessary for us here in Harlem Township. So thank you. Thank you. Keep it up, Jason. You might get those goodies you're after. <laughs> <laughs> well, we got a big month coming up next month, too, so I'll be back. <laughs> Okay. Um, fire department, you got everything, Mike? Yes, sir. All right. Thank you. Did right. you need to hit on that watershed? Uh, that was on page four. Oh, shoot. I missed that, didn't I? Got Sorry. Uh, wait a minute. Hmm. Oh, I put it aside. Yeah, I'm sorry. Okay. Um, I went to the hearing for the Hoover 61 Monday. For the ditch petition now the hoover 61 is an open ditch that crosses 605 and goes uh southwest well that part of the petition did not pass also there was a lateral main called the mackawee that run along the east side of 605 up into the village that did not pass but the one that the township is most involved with the crable main passed that assessment is twenty thousand one hundred and fifty five dollars and fifty cents the crable one lateral passed that's forty nine hundred and four dollars and ninety one cents the crable lateral two passed that's eight thousand one hundred and five dollars and eighty eight cents so our total now is thirty three thousand one hundred and sixty six dollars and twenty nine cents so um it's the same thing, Lisa. We'll um, pass this resolution and money is due by September 18th. So we'll, you'll do a check run before the September meeting, correct? Yeah. yeah. Two levels. So, yeah. So we'll get that. So I'll I make. Probably do it at, sorry. I'll probably do it yeah. at the beginning of the month. Yeah. So mm -hmm. we can get it made. That'll be fine. So I'm making the resolution that we approve, and uh, this is going to be, it's still going to be called Hoover 61 Watershed Drainage Improvement Petition to generally improve drainage, both surface and subsurface, to a good and sufficient outlet, replacing, repairing, altering existing improvements as required, and creating new surface and subsurface drain mains or laterals as requested by this position. The total cost to Harlem Township will be $33,166.29. Do I have a second? Second. So the, the amount that's in the resolution is incorrect. Is that right? right? It's 33166.29. Okay. Thank you. That is because, I'm sorry. The 29. Yeah. I'll give you this when I get done. Oh, perfect. Um, Motion's been moved, and you seconded, Adam? I did. Okay. Uh, roll call vote, please. Jackson. Aye. Holiday. Aye. Frank. Aye. Okay. Resolution passed. I need to note. I've asked trustees if they would like Ashley to become a notary. Yeah. So what's entailed in that, Ashley? Um, I'm not positive. We... Kendra and I were going through some training and we have been coming across quite a few like notarized letters, especially for like cemetery use and things like that. Um, and so she had asked to see if that's something that you guys would be interested in to have a notary with me being full time in the office. 
Um, that way, if anything does need to be notarized, I'm here Monday through Friday consistently. Um, so I can definitely look into um, $50 cost. Yeah, why don't you inquire? Go ahead and look into it. Okay, cool. Okay. Now, zoning applications. We have uh, two different hearings we need to set. Excuse me. Resolution 240821T18. We're receiving the application HTZC 24-05 amendment to the articles, zoning articles, 4, 7, 8, 15. Um, make this motion that the hearing will be September 18th at 715. Uh, regional planning met on the 25th of July and gave their recommendation. The zoning commission made their recommendation at their August 5th hearing. So we would have our hearing on September 18th, 715. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor, aye. 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 Now we have a second hearing for um it's 24 821 T 19. We're receiving application 2406 amendment articles um 21 section 2118. So we're receiving this application from the commission 2407 amendment package articles 478 15. Regional planning met August 29th. Commission gave recommendation at their hearing August 5th, and we will set our hearing for September 18th at 7.30. Do I have a second? Second. All those in favor, aye. 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 Motion carried, hearing set. Uh, Mike, you're up. Okay. Uh, the first thing that I, I want to request is, uh, and I realize I'm going after Jason, so <laughs> the well's probably dry, but uh, resolution 24-0821T020, approval for purchase of vehicle for the township zone use. And we're just looking for something that, uh, a vehicle for zone use not to exceed $27,000. I think there's stuff out there we can get that's return on a lease, low mileage that we could use for you know, being out on the road, being out on the on the inspections, being out on the uh, complaints, and it's becoming more and more dangerous for me to be stopping out there in my truck, popping on my flashers, and getting out and going at it because mm -hmm. something would happen if I'd get hit or the or the truck would get hit. That being in my car, my insurance is not going to go well. Lisa, there money in the well somewhere. Well, um, <laughs> well, since we're not buying a dump truck, we're buying a truck. We still got a a, a American Rescue Plan money, and we still got motor vehicle money. Okay. But would that be a better deal if we buy two trucks at once, or not? I don't know. Could be. I, I would think... we get a better deal or not? No, I mean probably not. One, you'd have to find them both in the same place. Yeah, I th you know, think we're looking for a return on a lease over. Yeah, ours time. isn't. You know, we're not going to be. And going Jason wants to buy a truck. Yeah, like yeah, Jason's got to have a Cadillac. It's going to be. <laughs> I'm looking for a '73 <laughs> Pinto for travel purposes. Uh, yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> uh, that would be comfortable. Um, so I no, I don't. Going to four dealerships, the the government discounting has taken quite a hit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, discounting in general. But so, yeah. and like I said, most of the time, those multi vehicle things are a perceived discount, not an actual one. So, I would, would this be left here or would Mike be driving at home? No, it's going to be right in that parking lot. Be, be left here. Only time it's going to be used is when I got to go out on. Be sh shared if uh, Adman needs to go pick up something or Mike needs to go look at property, that type of thing. Didn't the township have a vehicle for zoning in the past? Years ago, it was a Crown Vic that came from Genoa Township. They had a pair of them, and they okay. ran until they didn't run. Yeah. Um, and they were towed away. How's that? Yeah. <laughs> I, well, I remember that. For a dollar. I remember that. Yeah. Um, so I think it would be important for us to have a motor vehicle use policy in place, and I'll try and submit something by next month uh, that's reasonable. 
helpful good. helpful for you. Sounds good. Yeah. Chief also said that he he could possibly help us out with yeah with some money on that because he was the one talking to us about it. So, oh, so do we need to figure out where the funding's coming from before we act or what? Well, so you guys are going to help too. Well, he said he I, might have some ideas. Oh. I think he was willing to not necessarily help with funding, but help with getting, getting. lighting done and things like that for your right. protection the and upset. safety on the roadway. Yeah, and, and getting that kind of stuff done. Yeah. But I oh, think okay. it was his. I think that was his intention. So you know, to write a check, we saved huh? some money, but we still have a budget that we need to adhere, and we're, we're we're hoping to do some things with the money that we do have left. So, <laughs> well, no, I mean we've got it because Jason said we're not buying a dump truck, and between the American Rescue Funds and okay. what I put in for the dump truck, all right, all right, we're good. So we're good. So, somebody want to make a motion? So moved. Second. So, uh, roll call on that, please. Jackson. Aye. Holiday. Aye. Aye. Okay. Now give us a rundown. Okay. Uh, right now we're currently at the uh, 44 permits. We got uh, 12 single family residentials, 14 accessory buildings, five remodels slash additions, extensions, um, eight pools, three decks, uh, one revision, one solar panel. On open enforcement issues, uh, we're currently tracking 16 code enforcement violations. Uh, I've added two more over the last month. Seven are businesses in a residential area. Two of these are with the prosecutor's office. The court has spoken with the attorney for both properties. They understand they're in violation of our zoning and the township stances cease and desist. Both businesses are exercising their right to attempt to rezone through the zoning commission. Currently, there's not been any active rezoning application for the dump truck property issue. Corps is attempting to contact contact their attorney and let them know if no action is taken soon, he will file the civil suit. Uh, I did receive a call from that attorney for the Port Wall business on Center Village Road. They're requesting the preliminary meeting with the Zoning Commission, and I think they're planning for a PCD. Uh, I'll set that up after I speak with the Zoning Chair, Mike, and find out when he wants to have that scheduled, which I think Mike's emailed me on that. Uh, we have one new business violation it was at the last zoning commission meeting asking questions and had every intention of planning to get their application in at the next zoning commission meeting. Uh, I was notified by the owner Monday that they found a commercial property in Columbus and they'll be moving their business to that location. And they'll give me weekly updates on the process of moving that business. Uh, one business has moved its equipment off site and committed to cleaning up the property. I have a follow-up inspection plan for the end of the month. This will likely result in another BZA variance request because he's not going to be able to move everything from his business off that property. So he's probably going to have to try for some sort of an expanded home use. Um, one business is on the health department radar and has until October 15th to clean up the site to the health department specifications, register the business with the EPA and follow all of their applicable guidelines. I will keep the violation active until the results of the health department actions are complete. We have one property that was approved by the BZA last month for an expanded home occupations variance. Uh, I will monitor that property because there are some requirements and restrictions. So I'll monitor that property for compliance with the agreement. We have one reported business violation uh, that I investigated and closed it due to an unsubstantiated claim. There's no activity on that property right now. One property is in violation of placing a fence in a right of way. And uh, Jason hit me up on this, and they drove fence poles through the top of our culvert in the right of way area. And he stopped in there and talked to them, told me they had to move it. They said they would, they haven't. So I just followed up and sent them a violation letter, a violation of right of way. So maybe we can get them to do something. Uh, the other six nuisance properties are for junk cars and discarded debris and trash. Two of the violations are continuing to work to clean up the properties. One property is still unowned. It is in the probate court, and no actions can be taken by the township or the prosecutor's office, but I have something else on that I'll review later. Uh, one property has cleaned up the issue and is currently selling the property, and one property is in the prosecutor's hand and is going through the courts. And the last one was just issued a second violation letter and be dealt with accordingly. I'm continuing to work on assigned violations, specifically the advertisements in the right of ways and on the telephone pools. I've issued letters, made phone calls to various businesses, and some of the signs have been removed. 
I continue to work with Jason and Bill. They're yanking them down when they can find them. Uh, so we'll continue on that. Uh, the properties that are persistent or ignoring our notifications will be turned over to Corey's office for the appropriate actions. The last two properties were sign violations on residential subdivisions. And currently they're at the BZA, the Ivy Ridge subdevelopment has put a sign in place that we had them in last, last year, was it last year and the last year, because they started, they decided to put those new signs at the end of their subdivision. We had them in last year and they came in and they were turned away because it was an incomplete application. Uh, we've been watching them. They basically didn't put a sign up and within about the last two weeks, they put signs up. So I sent a letter out to them. They called me and said that uh, the one I sent it to that was dealing with it the first time, the person I sent it to actually isn't the guy anymore. He said he would get that letter to the appropriate guy and they would be contacting me. Um, I've also initiated contact with uh, Greystone Development on Harlem Road. They've been sent a notice of violation. They have a subdivision sign that violates the zoning code and I'm waiting for their response. I did speak with the HOA president and he stated he will address the issue, possibly by removing the sign. He will be reviewing the issue with the other residents to reach a consensus agreement on their plan of action and will notify me of their plans. I, I assume they'll be requesting a variance through the BZA as well. Maybe they'll surprise me and cut it down. I don't know. Uh, as I stated above, we have three properties that we need to make a decision on what our next steps will be. We need to schedule a special meeting for us to go into executive session to discuss pending litigation on these properties and possible avenues to clean them up. After speaking with Corey about these options, he recommended an executive session with the trustees for him to review the options and the processes to abate these nuisance issues, as well as the cost of recovery of the process. So it's something you guys need to think about and set a special meeting. And you guys will go straight in executive session and talk. We'll all talk about what we're going to do and how we're going to address it. One of those properties being the Hatch Road property, uh, he told me that we could possibly, since there still is nobody that owns it, we could possibly just send notifications that we're going to come clean it up and just go get it cleaned up. But that cost goes to us. It goes on to taxes. Right now, nobody owns the house, so we're going to be out that. So we've got to weigh those options. Um as far as the zoning commission, the zoning commission is working to finalize a solar per permit, solar panel permit language. Part of what the discussion is the possibility of opting out of allowing large solar farms to be built in all or portions of the township. Uh, I sent the information for you guys to review and uh, you guys consider that. Let us know if that's something we want to pursue, what we'll to get with the zoning commission and if we do want to pursue that. Would you consider that at all in that information? Could we be included in sure. that information? Sure. So we can work in conjunction with the EMA also? Yeah, I'll send that to you. Thank you. Uh, just some general comments based on a phone calls, request information on zoning changes. The Zoning Commission will be kept busy with AR and FR1 requests and applications in the future. They do have a few more coming. I get calls on those every week. Uh, there continues to be a lot of interest in the township. Lot splits, rezoning, and in-law additions are hot items still as they were last month. Uh, there's been an increase in interest in the larger properties for sale in the township. And I've had numerous conversations about infrastructure availability and timelines. That is it. What are you thinking in regard to timeline for your executive session meeting? When would you like to have it? As soon as possible, but whenever you guys can. Corey's open to anything. He said he'd come out anytime. Do we need to choose some dates and run them by Corey to connect with him? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, he said he'd come out anytime so we can get it done. Okay, we'll try to get that figured out. Uh, so I am interested in in pursuing the solar language permit, the permit for language there. Um, so personally, I think it is something we should learn more about and consider. You you think you're in favor of keeping them out of the town, opting out or opting into it? Opting out. Okay. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Didn't know which way you're going there. Yeah, I wasn't sure either. <laughs> okay. Is that it? Yep. Thank you. All right. Mr. Steele Smith, yes, yes, you're up. Got my assistant here helping me put up the uh, map of the township here. This mouse work? Maybe. Maybe. I'll just use this.
Tested on my computer before. Um, do you want me to get on my computer and join remotely yeah, and share my screen? Yeah. Okay. Fine. All right. I'll go ahead and start talking. Yep. While she's setting that up, uh, I'll get started. Jim Steele Smith with Economic Development and all other real estate problems that come for the township. Uh, helped Mike a lot. Uh, we have to go out together on a lot of things, put eyes on a lot of things. And last month, um, we've done a lot together. Uh, it's been an interesting process, believe me. Uh, going forward, we had a great month on meetings and that type of thing. Um, had meetings with the uh, Delaware County Sewer Department, Delaware County Engineering on Roads, and also with Delaware, uh, well, with Delco Water. Um, with these, and when we get online, I'll show them to you, um, in Delaware County, engineering, roads, and sewer, uh, we're getting a baseline on locations, and with these locations based on, uh, geography and use, uh, we're getting an idea of where this stuff needs to go, uh, as far as right away. Uh, I'll go over that with the, with you on the map. Uh, also met with the um, New Albany County or New Albany City Manager. Uh, we had a nice meeting. Uh, talked to them about a possible jet. Um, they thought it was an interesting meeting and said they would probably get back to us around probably the end of this week. So that was an interesting meeting. Also, as uh, Holly alluded to, we are going to meet with two other entities. Uh, for possible JEDs, and uh, we're very hopeful. Uh, Holly has already done some intro uh, work with them, uh, one being Gahanna, and uh, so that sounded encouraging. Um, going forward, uh, Mr. Holiday and I met with the uh, Big Walnut School Superintendent, Ryan McLean, and the Treasurer, Scott Gooding. Uh, we talked about our proposed TIF with them, and uh, we showed them our overlays and what we're doing and um, uh, had a really good conversation. Uh, they have no objections to our proposed TIF. Uh, obviously, they've been through it before. Uh, in the conversation, it was interesting when I was talking with them about some of what Harlem Township wants, some of the things that have come up in the past, uh, and I brought that up to the superintendent, was that all these schools are being built in Sunbury and we don't have any new schools in Harlem Township. And as we develop, uh, I told him our process for getting, getting uh, developers to participate in the ground for a school or a fire department. And so they thought that was a good idea. And the superintendent said that he's tired of busing. He's a relatively new superintendent up there. Tired of busing all these kids from all over the district up to Sunbury. It creates a lot of time, a lot of effort. And he says that with all everything that's going on, that he is in favor of any new schools that be need built uh, because of our population uh, would stay in Harlem Township. And that is one thing that a lot of the parents and stuff had brought up during our uh, open meetings with the uh, community. So I thought that was good. And uh, we had a good communication on that. And like I said, they uh, had no problem uh, with us doing the TIF. That enables share screen a bit. Are you ready? I'm ready. Maybe. Here you go. <clears throat> As it's sharing. Yeah. 
Yeah, there, there we it go. is. It's just slow. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I'll try to make it bigger for you. Yeah, if you would. You guys have these maps available online or? Yeah, this is our basic. Uh, I've just, there you go. That's good. Yeah. Uh, drop it down a little bit. A little small. So this particular map without the utilities will be online uh, with zoning. This shows the new, uh, this shows the new uh, overlays on it. The old overlays, which are already on here, are online and on our uh, website. So uh, under zoning. Okay. So what we have done is I've taken the township based on proposed use. Of course, everything starts where the sewer is at. This is where you get the most um, activity and going from that outward. So I've taken, if you studied economics or didn't, it doesn't matter. If you have the United States as a whole, that's considered macro. Then if you dig down and want to do something in Ohio, that would be considered micro. I've taken Harlem Township and Harlem Township would be macro. And then the use area, which is the orange line going across Gorsuch Road, that is considered what we're calling a micro area. It all needs develop, planned and developed in a professional way. But our activity is so great on the micro area that we have to work at that fairly quick. So you have two things going on. You have to do the entire township. Plus, we have to address uh, what's happening on the micro area, which is Gorsuch South is the most intense uh, developing area. Uh, so what happens is that sewer is going to be done in less than a year and a half. The builders and the planners and the real estate people are already starting to do their site plans and they want answers as to what we're doing. We have zoning in place. We need to put utilities in place. When I met with sewer and water and engineering, we came up with a base of uh, potential areas. So the blue line is Delta Water. It comes across Woodtown Road. They're running new lines across Hoover. It's going to come down Woodtown Road to Center Village, as you can see the blue line coming down Center Village. Then from there, it's going to go straight down to Fancher along 605. That will be a main, a new main. Uh, hopefully along 605, they've already got easements. So hopefully that'll go a little quicker. Uh, they're trying to get down to that area as soon as possible. Uh, that was their option. They've also called and they're trying to work with the uh, trailer park who has an old uh, water tower and they're trying to negotiate with them as taking that water tower down and putting a new one up down there. That would greatly increase the pressure, the water pressure in that area. Then also in the micro area, if you follow the green line, what you have is, that is our sewer, proposed sewer. I talked to Tiffany Mag. Based on all the properties and what's going on down there, this is just, like I said, a potential, but it comes across on the north side of Fancher Road and goes all the way across and we will hit uh, east um, County Line Road with that main and then run a partial main up to Gorsuch. Um, what's interesting about that, this line is super, super deep. And when you get into the geography and the land, and then of course, sewers are all gravity driven. So what happens is you say, well, why can't I put it here? Or why can't I put it there? Sometimes because of the gravity and the depth of the sewer, um, you have limitations as to the areas that you want to serve, that sometimes you may have to go to another sewer, an, an auxiliary sewer, or that type of thing. But for right now, we're getting a baseline of where the sewer is going to go. It can be moved. And then from there, we're also getting a baseline on the yellow line 
which is proposed um, roads for down there. They're talking about widening, maybe, Fancher Road. Don't know yet. Also, in talking with planners and ourselves, we believe that maybe there should be a new road north of Fancher, just a little ways, to carry all this traffic that's coming over from Licking County. They're all going to head towards the bridge going across Hoover Dam. We don't have any control over that bridge, but what we can do is control the traffic through Harlem Township. So there again, these are all potential areas of or potential lines. Then going along with having met with people on the JED and working on our TIF, what we're trying to do again is get a baseline of what we need and what we're going to do. This all needs to be professionally handled going forward. We're just the boots on the ground. However, um, with these, we'll get an idea of costs. And we'll also use, and it's funny because everybody's been talking about Montrose and it's on my it's on my list here. Somebody like Montrose um, to help us figure the economics of this. And by say economics, how much revenue are we going to get from the JED and the TIF so that these sewers and roads and things can be done our way? If the township does not take the lead on this and you leave it to the developers, the developers can institute their own TIF with Delaware County. They can also institute their own JED as property owners. There again, we will be involved, but instead of sitting at the head of the table, we'll be at the kitty table. We don't want that. We want to be at the head of the table, directing how the growth goes along with the developers, but we want to have a major say in what's going on. So what we're working on is these areas and trying to get where these might go. There again, it's very complicated. However, we want to get a sense of the cost and a sense of the revenue. And that's where the Montrose and Holly, Holly's organization and everybody, we all come together and work on this. Um, with that, then on the macro part, we still have, we've got those 26 square miles we got to work on. There again, we're doing overlays. Once we start to get a handle on the southern part, which is the most active, then we will work north and then we will try and get an idea talking with the sewer department and the roads. Uh, Delco is pretty much on board with about anything once they get that main line across on that blue line. So at that point, uh, there again, we'll work with the professionals. You got to talk about gravity. You got to talk about if you need a pump station. You got to talk about roads, uh, these type of things. Uh, when we were talking, uh, coming back to Holly, if you look at Trenton Road up there, uh, Trenton Road has a new overlay going in along that top section uh, up in the left-hand corner. Uh, that's going to be a new mixed-use area. Uh, the reason that it went to mixed use from just straight residential. This is where you have to be able to pivot is because Sunbury just annexed 1,350 acres on us at the first of the year down to Trenton Road, almost touching Trenton Road. They're just like a property off of that. So with them coming down and they, and they actually um, zoned that uh, industrial. And when I say industrial, it's not like our light industrial. Theirs is a heavy industrial. It's they can do everything, but probably a foundry. They can assemble cars. They can do all kinds of stuff. If you read their zoning, it's very heavy industrial. So we want to accent that by putting in a mixed use so that those workers would have a place to go. Those workers would have a place to eat. Uh, eventually, those workers would have a place to live. And that the idea is that that keeps them from annexing on into Harlem Township because they need those services. And so uh, from the introduction that uh, Bob Singer did with us and Adam, we met with the mayor of Galena. And so we've pinpointed that area is like a little micro area along Trenton Road. And in talking with Galena, uh, in fact, I talked to the mayor again today, called me 
And we're trying to work out a deal where we can get a sewer out of Galena to run along Trenton Road. Uh, we'll do an some kind of economic deal with Galena, some guy, some type of cooperation. Uh, they're very, very interested in working with us. Uh, they're having a problem with Delaware County not wanting to give up their sewer lines. and uh, But Delaware County has a problem getting there. So that's one thing we're working on. He is working diligently on it. We're just sort of passive. I have to work out, see what kind of deal he can work with them. Uh, on our next meeting uh, with Tiffany Mag Sewer, she wants to talk about the southern part of Harlem Township again. So Dave and Mike and I were and Holly, we're all going to traipse back up to Delaware and get this thing going a little better. And at that point, we're going to talk with Tiffany again about the Trenton Road in Galena because they can't service it. It's important that we get something going, at least planned up there so we can move so Sunbury doesn't come further down. One of the property owners, I understand, I can't give you their name because I don't know. I haven't looked it up. But I understand one of the farmers that annexed to Sunbury on the other side of Trenton also owns land right across the street in Harlem Township. Not saying that they're going to do anything, but we want to we want to take care of that area. We want to make sure it stays in Harlem Township. So we're going to try to get that area serviced. Uh, a lot going on. I've tried to cover a lot in a little bit of time. For that, I'm sorry, but I know your meeting's going on forever. So, uh, any questions from the trustees? Uh, does Harlem Township have a written economic development plan? Written economic, not that I know of. Thank you. Um, thank you for um, the uh, call record that you and kind of activity record. That was excellent. It really gave an understanding of what you have been doing over the last month. Also, I asked um, Mike and Jim just to provide a snapshot of the number of acres they believe are um, being considered for development at this point in time. And there was 1,143. Mm -hmm. That covers 18 different parcels and about 10 different parties that may- Some of them are collaborating. Collaborating. But that that gives us a little bit more of a, a more facts to work with, I think, as trustees, yeah. as we're thinking about uh, potential development on on our fringe. Yes. So, and and for the public, that that figure of eleven forty three is from Center Village South. Copy. Okay. Yeah. So where there's other stuff going on north, but it's not as urgent. So when I said that the developers and people have you know, rights. They have land rights. They own the land. They're allowed to do, you know, within the law what they want with the land. So a lot of them, they get started. In other words, people have a perception that you wait until the sewer's done. That's not how it works. They are planning now because, again, they're going to go to the sewer department. They're going to go to roads. They're going to go to the building department. They've got to go to water and sewer. Uh, they've got to go to all these agencies and they have to work on their plans. So these site plans are starting to be drawn up now. The economics are being drawn up now. They have their own ideas about how they want to do a JED and, and receive money out of the JED for their infrastructure and the TIFs and that type of thing. Like I said, that's why it's important that we stay on top of this and not let them get ahead of us so that we can cooperate with them and collaborate with them, but we come from uh, from strength, not from weakness, that we have a, we can do that. And in talking to other townships, uh, that's been a problem in the past. And when Mike and I would go up to uh, Delaware County Regional Planning for some meetings, they would put these maps on the wall and you would see where what we're trying to do wasn't done. And you see how it's a hodgepodge apartment buildings, uh, houses, but they're all intermingled. There's no structure. With Holly's help, we are creating a structure and how we want to get things done. It's a large area. We'll have to get micro when I say micro. So now you're looking at thousands of acres. we got to get down to the smaller roads. What goes here? What goes there? It's very complex. Uh, like I said, we need Holly. We need Montrose. 
We need boots on the ground. Um, that's, you know, that's what we're working on. And uh, the sewer is coming. The $80 million, whatever it is, I forget what they're building it at, Bob. Uh, I think it's $80 million. It's going to tap us. Delaware County has now stated that before they weren't going to do anything, they're going to spend like $7.5 million to get that sewer tapped and over towards Harlem Road so that it's ready for us or the developers to take it from there. So originally they weren't going to do that. So they're anxious to get this going also. So it's like I said, there's a lot going on. It's hard to just in 15 minutes tell everybody what's going on, but it's very complex. Anything else, guys? Uh, you know, as I think back to earlier this year, you know, February, March, and, and a lot of those questions that the community brought up of like, why aren't we using some of our own economic tools, JEDs, TIFs, you know, things like that. Um, you know, why aren't we talking to some of our other closer neighbors, things like that. Um, it, I'm really happy to see that we are doing some of those things, right? I mean, we've we've talked about TIFs and JEDs a lot here recently, kicking the tires with Galena on some things. Um, so it's great to see that, you know, we're acting on a lot of the things that were brought up in conversation and communication in the community earlier this year. I'm especially kind of impressed, interested in, in what you're looking at, what we are looking at in that northeast corner or north, excuse me, northwest corner as it gets up to Kalina. You know, we you talked about Sunbury, um, you know, and the annexation there. I mean, MI Homes is putting a huge hundred and something housing in my home the development right there in the corner almost 400 houses. almost 400 houses right and i mean that you can throw a rock from there and hit our township right so right. but then also like i said looking across from where sunbury annexed and making our own adjustments so that we can better support that annexation to prevent our own annexation if that's not strategic i don't know what is so i feel like that's a really good move um in areas that we're putting in there i also wanted to comment too that you know, when, uh, Jim and I had a really great conversation with the superintendent and their interim treasurer um, at Big Walnut Schools, and I, I want to say that that was really well received. They made a, men a point to mention to us that they appreciated us talking to them about these things before doing them. And so, Holly, I know that, that was one of the things that you had brought up and Pete mentioned, I think, when we first started having the TIF conversation is – Typically, this is only weird for the school system, right? Because it's a benefit for everyone involved, except maybe your your public schools. And so when we sat down in, in the superintendent's office and just kind of talked to him about it, I mean, first thing the treasurer said was, we appreciate you just letting us know about it. Because other townships close to us have done things like this and surprised them with it, right? And so I know not everybody has schools in the system or kids in the school system. I do. So this is a very important thing to me. I wanted right. to make sure that they knew that we were not trying to pull the rug out from under them. Um, so it's been a, a lot of really good news, good feedback and good community engagement, I think, over the last couple of months. And, and I appreciate the work that everybody's doing on it, on the zoning and economic development side. Yeah, thank you. Like I said, uh, now that we have something to show the different municipalities and that type of thing, when we go in. Uh, they're always impressed with the work that's been done. And you have to, you know, Strategic Planning Committee and Holly, they help put this together. And uh, when we go and we show it to, uh, for instance, the school board, they go, whoa, look at this work you've got. And New Albany, whoa, we didn't expect all this work that you've done. And uh doesn't mean they're going to do what we want to do, but at least we have something to show them that we're not just coming in with the blanks and say, well, we're thinking about this. We are doing something. We are proactive and we will continue to be proactive. It's very important, at least in my thinking, in our department's thinking, that we start getting numbers. I need, we need the numbers, the costs, the revenue that could be brought in so we can pay and, you know, pay for this. Also, um, with assistant chief sitting here, we have to include the fire department. I always in my presentations, and if you'll remember up there, Adam, that not only did I talk about school ground, but I talked about fire department ground. And when you brought up the Northwest section, chief had come in and talked about with all that industrial uh, zoning up there in Sunbury, is Harlem going to have to do mutual aid if uh, to go up into those industrial areas. And if so, that could tax us 
manpower wise, equipment wise, that type of thing. So that's something I have to look at is do we need a little substation up there? We know we're going to need a substation on the southern part. Yeah, not a big, huge station, but what are, what are those substations? Just one engine or a one one engine and a and a squad? Yeah, probably. Yeah. Minimum you're gonna want two pieces of apparatus. So yeah. be the sizing to at least hold two apparatus. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you know, we can't forget about those guys. And I always bring up land for schools and land for a fire station. Well, and just to be clear, what you're talking about right now is in, in an event where a developer purchases a large piece of land from the township, they in turn give some of it back, right? Well, we so, have to get, well, what we do- In layman's terms. In layman terms, yes. Right, yeah. right. So, you know, what, what we're talking about there is- a, We strong arm. A less <laughs> less of a, a, a taxation on a levy on the on the community for right. a new fire department, less, right. less school levy right. for new schools, right? Because- we're more or less getting free land from right conscientious smart development of the and, and we and the developers that are coming in that Mike and I have worked with and Holly's worked with uh, they're a good bunch so far I, I've known them for years I didn't invite them in they just showed up but I, I know <laughs> who they are uh, work really well with communities and are interested in doing well with for the community uh, we've actually got two developers that have missed out on buying land in this micro zone. Mm -hmm. And they keep calling they're they're looking for land and they are a good partner. And we just, you know, and I said, well, you just have to keep looking. I'm not your realtor. <laughs> I just wanted to chime in on the conversation about the um, substations and fire departments. Um, when we are writing these overlay zones, the open space requirements, build we are starting to build in language that the open space can be used for community services for a fire station mm -hmm. or a school um so if they provide some of you know that they don't they don't give all of their open space up for that but they can dedicate that um and one of our clients um the, in granville township the fire chief um, says think of fire stations as infrastructure don't think of them as a service Think of them as infrastructure, right. and I've really started to turn my mind. Um, uh, that's a good that idea. Way. Yeah, that's no, a very good idea. So, but yes, there is a lot of I uh, put on my notes here uh, when I was counting up for you, John, and the and the trustees, the acreage, uh, that micro zone there again, south of Gorsuch, uh, seventy five to eighty percent of the large parcels are already spoken for. Most of the stuff that's left is over towards. East County Line Road on for Francher. And that's probably the reason for that is this is the furthest away from where the sewer is coming in. So, but they are, there was a parcel, a 40 acre parcel that just went under contract over there. And uh, it was, it was for, it was been for sale for a while. Uh, there's another parcel that went into contract last week at Duncan Run in uh, 605. Um, what was that called? Hummingbird? Yeah. Yeah. Hummingbird. That's like 65 acres, Dave. Right. Yeah. That just went into contract. So, I mean, there's a lot going on. People don't, just because you've seen cornfields out there doesn't mean that people aren't planning. Yeah. And that's what our job is to plan so that we're not behind the eight ball. Would you say that you are executing an economic development plan? Uh, Yeah. Okay. Yes. And whose plan is that? We, we start with, well, when you say uh, just, whose plan? Yes. Whose plan is that? What do you mean? It's the township's whose plan. Whose plan is the economic development plan that you are executing? I take the zoning that we've used. I wouldn't call it a plan. I would call it a strategy. And ah, there you go. The there you go. Strategy yeah. that we are proposing to you as an idea to move forward with. Our and whose strategy is this? This would be a... A collaborative? A collaboration of all the information that has been gathered from all of the entities on what their um, proposals are for moving water lines here, for moving sewer lines here, for transportation to moving where they think the roads should be. It's bringing it all together into one pitch. Have the trustees been made aware of this strategy? Absolutely. Every month. No, in a written form. We did our, pre you're talking about, did we actually write one? Is yes. that what you're asking? Yes. Um, and do you think the trustees 
should sign off on such a strategy? I don't know. So my experience is that you can't legislate what a developer or owner wants to do. No, I'm I'm talking about the strategy, not what developers. We're are. not doing anything different than um, what the entities that own those infrastructures are proposing. All we're doing is putting that in map form. Um, so I don't think that we really have the ability to um, change what is on here, other than to present to you what those conversations are, and the zoning follows what the. Um, quick strategy guide calls for. Yeah, do we have an do we have an opportunity as a township to articulate a strategy that projects five, ten, twenty five, fifty year goals? I think that should be something that you look at. Yes. And is an economic development plan a part of that strategy? Okay. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions? Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks, Jim. Okay, that brings us to discussion by the board of the TIF and whether to do the letter to the Board of Education's Big Walnut and Johnstown Monroe to uh, proceed. Is the motion just on the letter or the approval of the TIF? Uh, no, we have to. We have to approve sending the letter first, in my understanding. After you send the letter, after 14 days, then you could do a motion. For the so tip. the letter is to advise the board, the schools yeah. that we are going letter to. Letter of notification. About it, yeah. um, I'd make the motion. Send the letter. Second. I'll second the motion. During discussion. So I will not be voting in favor of this. And the reason that I'm not going to vote in favor of this is because I'm being asked to vote on an, an element of an economic development plan that has not yet been crafted, which is part of a larger strategic plan, which has not yet been crafted. And until we have thought through as a township, those elements of a strategic plan and an economic development plan, I can't support implementing tools at this point in the process. I think it's premature. I wanna make this note, I'm all in favor of TIF. At the appropriate time, I will vote for TIF. I think it's a good thing and that the township should utilize it. I think it's great we've engaged Big Walnut schools in this regard. However, we haven't done the hard work as a township to get us to the place where we're ready to make an informed vote about this. And I, and I can't vote about it without numbers associated, even if they're projections. There should be some numbers that speak to the revenue that's generated in a TIF to make an informed decision. We can't get the numbers and the revenue without the TIF and the JED in place to have a group like Montrose do the financial study. Can you explain, please? Well, I just want to um, make sure that it's clear that the t this 10-year 75-25 TIF that's being proposed is an overlay of the township. Um, it's not directly tied to a specific project. Therefore, we cannot provide numbers on it. This is clearly, it is a tool to utilize as a placeholder to position the township first as a TIF holder. Once projects start to come on board, then we can reconsider re redoing that particular parcel into a 30-year TIF include the school districts in a pilot program, and we would have specific numbers on what can be generated from that TIF. If we wait until a project's here, we will be too late because the county could potentially come in and have be tied to that TIF at that point in time. Putting this layer in protects the township from 
being as being the seat uh, being the driver of the TIF. We've done this in Jersey Township. We have done this in Union Township. Um, I would highly recommend that you move forward with this. It does have to be a unanimous vote to approve the TIF too. Thank you. That that clarification is very important. Um, so let's take the numbers and set them aside. Willing to do that. Still very much invested in strategic planning, economic plan, etc. Not convinced of the threat of Delaware County. Um, having spoken with people in Delaware County. And I understand there are different opinions in this room about that. Um, yep. But I'll... I don't want to argue about the character of Delaware County. No. Did you talk to Berlin Township? Yes. Okay. Yeah. May I, my, may I add something right while we're discussing this? I appreciate it. Um, I'm not going to discuss Delaware County. You asked me not to. Uh, but what I can tell you, and this is from experience, and it's also from conversations that I'm getting, is if we don't pass a TIF and we don't move forward with that, Number one, it's in our zoning code. We have to have a TIF. Even more so, we have to have a JET. That is very strong language. If we don't have those, these people that I'm talking about that are planning, they will go around us. So why we're doing all these things that you want to get done, John, which I understand, that's not a problem. However, we're under the gun that they will go around us. The township will be involved in their TIF and their JED, but we'll be at the bottom of the heap. And this is not, I'm not projecting a threat. I'm, I'm, just, I'm talking reality. And when you talk to the other townships about what's happened and how this has been taken away from them, this is an opportunity to control ourselves. We still have to get the economics. We still have to, you know, plan or whatever. Like Holly said, this is a placeholder. It lets them know we're first in line that they have to talk to us. And the only thing is, if this doesn't pass, next week when I get calls and I tell them we don't have it, they're going to plan for themselves and go around us. So that's, that's my statement. Thank you. So what if you said to them, Jim, hey, we've decided as a township to take a window and you can, if it's six months or nine months or 12 months, and we're going to focus on strategic planning, economic development, and then we're going to take a look at this tip. Um, that's fine and dandy. As I said, they're drawing plans now. They're not going to wait. I will also say that um, we have a lot of um, residential development that's being proposed and there the housing crisis is real mm -hmm. um the, there are housing plans being drawn everywhere not just in harlem township but everywhere and it's going to explode when the sewer gets here you have a year and a half before the sewer gets here and i that they, they have to plan a year and a half to two years before the sewer is here. They can't wait for the sewer to be here to start planning. Um, I totally agree with you that we should have 20 year goals, 30 year goals. But if we wait to do that and not do this quick strategy stuff, you're gonna be too far behind. Jersey Township didn't have a plan before we went in there. They lost half of their township with one swoop overnight. I don't want that to happen to Harlem Township. That's why they hired me to come in and at least get them the quick strategy guide for the quick things to do. I'm not saying we don't go to the next step. I'm not saying that. But we have to react quickly to the things that are on the ground right now happening or you're going to lose out. Yeah, so you're communicating a sense of urgency. And, and I can talk to, have talked with other planners. Um, and folks that specialize in TIFs, et cetera, and they don't communicate that same sense of urgency. They they communicate, hey, you've, you've got a 12 to 18 month window here 
where you can do some serious thinking. So I, I again, tell you to look at Jersey Township. The, Jersey so, couldn't have stopped what happened. So no, um, may I? Um, on the ground, the developers, the people who are spending millions of dollars on ground already, all right, they have a way, um, it's simple to me because I used to do it also. You can go in and do your site work before the sewer ever starts. They can put buildings under roof before the sewer gets to them so that they can be ahead of the, you know, of, on the construction. This has been communicated to me. I didn't bring it up. They tell me that, hey, we can do the site work. We can get ready. They're working on that. You know, um, I don't know what else to explain, John, other than on the ground, <clears throat> these gentlemen, these companies are not going to spend tens of millions of dollars on ground and watch a sewer get built and not at least try to do something. They're not going to do it. That's why they've all congregated in that micro area that I showed you. That's why you have 1,143 acres all around that taken. They're not going to wait a year and a half for two years. Yeah, so so, so an interesting compromise might be, uh, are we willing to look at a TIF in the area that we feel is most vulnerable while we also work on these other elements that we that we that I personally feel are necessities. Uh, oh, can we? That's can we something do, to consider. Would you, would you consider uh, if we got Pete to uh, adjust the area to the micro area? I would be more comfortable with that. Would you be more comfortable with that? Yes. Because that that's what worries me. That's what worries me too. Yeah, that's that's where we're worried. Where yeah. the activity seems to be. Yeah, yeah, that's where your activity is. And, you know, so that will give you time. And even when you talk to the planners that are going to come, uh, somebody that's running around, Joe Simonello. Right. Uh, Joe will say, hey, we got to take, he's on the phone. He says, what are you guys doing? He wants, he's got to get started, but he also wants to help plan the whole township. Yeah. So does Steiner. I, and I've, I've talked to Joe about the very things I'm sharing this evening, strategic planning. And he's, he understands the need for those things. Mm -hmm. And at least nods in affirmation, right? But, um, but we have to not opposed to. Yeah. So I, if if we as a community would make a commitment to um, producing a strategic plan that includes an economic development plan over the next twelve months, okay, I think that would be a great thing for us. Um, and I'll stop there. Yeah. So. Which is fine. The only, you know, if we had, if we didn't have the sewer coming, this conversation, we wouldn't be having a conversation like this. We would be having a conversation as who's going to do, help us with the economic plan, the money, that type of thing, the vision. But because we don't control this, that's where we have the problem. Uh, I would love to sit down and, and we all figure out where we're going, what we're doing. I think that's great stuff. It's a lot of fun for me. Well, but it's but, it's quite serious because when when you are at the podium and you're talking about execution, I think it's very important to tie that execution to a document that we know this is what Jim is working on. And we've all assented to that. We agree with this direction. We're informed right. about that direction. Right. That's fine. And we've communicated it to our residents. Yeah. So there are no surprises when they hear, hey, Jim is talking about a Jed with Gehanna. Because we've already talked about it, it's on paper. Nobody's surprised. Mm -hmm. But if if someone somebody said, Gehanna, why are we talking to Gehanna? Not understanding how a Judd works, then that those are the things that are the potential for creating chaos. And, and we've explained that over two and a half years. I don't know that people have heard you. Huh? I don't know that people have heard you. And what there I'm saying is there. having it in writing okay. is so important. So to move forward, let's, yeah. let's move forward. <clears throat> if we get with Pete and work a JED for the micro area, would you be willing to- a TIF. I'm sorry, no, no, yeah, the, a TIF uh, for the micro area, giving us time. Well, we're still gonna work on a plan, don't get me wrong. I mean, 
we have to address the people that want to do something, but we can also take what's left and work on a plan there and going forward. Um, I, I think that would be great. My my concern is, you know, getting run over. When you say the micro area, are we talking the southern border or just? Because I'm concerned about. It was, it was basically, if you take a straight line going from west, even though Gorsuch stops, if you right, follow that right, line right. all the way across. Okay. So that's like the bottom third. Correct. Yeah, the bottom third of the township. Okay. That's where all the activity is right now. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, John? Uh, bottom third is different than micro area. Uh, no. Well, I, I, I call it a third. Maybe it's not a whole third. Yeah. If no you no worries. The... Let's, we don't need to get into those details. No, I'm, I'm just so saying. So I think that if Pete goes back and he looks at the area that we're most concerned about, right. and you make a proposal based on that, that, that would be interesting to look at. I'm yet to understand the detriment of implementing a 1075 across the township. And I'm curious what that what that is to you. The downside. Yeah. Um, the downside to me is that we have we are being asked, we, this board, is being asked to vote on something that we have not been a part of planning for. Um, th that's 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 it in a nutshell. I'll go on to say the quick strategy guide does talk about tips. It, it defines a tip. It talks yeah. about implementing them, and it include it's included in the zoning. So there are documents that talk about it. Are there specific documents that show the water and the sewer lines? No, those are new tonight because those are new conversations that have happened. Sure. But the zoning and the tips and the jars are not here. And a strategic plan would include how these tools work together and where you might want to employ them together in the township, correct? I believe that we talk about that to in the quick strategy guide. You define them in the quick strategy guide, they're each given a couple of paragraphs with bullet points. They're just little definitions that aren't talking execution. Right, right? and again, we can't talk execution right now. We don't have projects. And conceptually talk right. execution. I feel like there's a lot of conversation that's based on conception, right? Mm -hmm. Quick strategy got 278 page document that was created over how many years, two years yeah. um, to, to, to determine the direction of the township. And as soon as a completion of that near 300 page document, uh, we found out about Intel. So I'm not sure no. how the strategy guide was a response came afterwards. To and came afterwards. The comprehensive plan. Yeah. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Comprehensive plan. Yeah. 278 page document. So, I, I I can respect what 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 you're what you're insinuating essentially here is it's execution of a strategy that is not one of the township. Yeah, I, I feel like that is your inference yes. here is that yeah. the that the it's self interest that's almost being acted upon. No, I'm not impugning motives. I'm saying I'm impugning a process, not motives. Sure. I believe that everyone's motives are of the best intention. However, I'm looking at a process and I'm saying. The correct process has not been followed. However, at whatever risk of the correct result, would would you agree? Like, so to me, it sounds that sounds like you think that a TIF in a smaller scale is still the correct end result. I we document the process, and knowing which way we want to go, why we want to do the TIF, how all this stuff works together. You would still be in favor of the TIF. I'm oh, I'm willing to compromise in this instance. Um, because in order to achieve other goals. I th yeah, I think the thing that I struggle with is we have a vehicle here that protects the township, enables the township to foster its own smart development, protects existing residents of the township, and is respond as a positive response to a lot of the feedback that we got from the township earlier in this year when I was also a citizen with a lot of these same opinions. But yet, we don't want to move forward with it simply because we didn't write down that this is what we wanted to do prior to this. Well, writing down, when you when you are forced to put something on paper, there's a maturity of thought that occurs. Mm -hmm. There's ownership that occurs. 
And then once you've got that on paper, there's communication that occurs. And so I would say it's far more than just writing something down. There, there's a maturation of thinking process. There are outside subject matter experts that we've not asked to contribute to. Then we've not created the document and we've not communicated it well to our residents. And I, and I know that you've provided the list of subject matter experts that we've discussed previously, of which we've consulted. I mean, we've talked to a few of those folks. We've talked to neighboring townships that have utilized a lot of the same vehicles and methodologies. We have our own planning in place. We have even talked to a local school district where the majority, I would say, of the children in this township go to school. Everyone seems to be in favor of this plan except for you. And I just want to point that out as just a statement of fact, because I'm still just trying to figure out where the downside is, because if I'm missing it, I would like to be educated on it. I just haven't found that answer yet. I, I think I've said everything I need to say. Understood. Yeah. Sure. So should we table the motion, Dave, until Pete can redraft language to talk about a partial? We thing? can do that. Until uh, Holly and Jim talk to Pete, see what we can get drafted, and then we'll proceed. Is that agreeable? Sure. Okay. Yeah. okay. Stay tuned. All right, moving on. Uh, we got uh, some zoning personnel to appoint. First motion I would make to approve Alan Zaco as alternate to the zoning commission. Second. All those in favor, aye. 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 Second one is to accept the resignation of Holly. Molly, I'm sorry. Molly Snodgrass. She's resigning as zoning uh, alternate, effective August 21st. Your second? second? Second. All in favor, aye. 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 Uh, next one is to approve uh, appointing Amy Richardson as alternate to the BZA. Second? Second. All in favor, aye. 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 Okay, Dave, still want to talk? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Make it short, please. <laughs> okay. You go up here, please. Yeah, sorry. Dave Snyder, Parks Planning Com Committee Chair. Um, just a brief update for you. Uh, Parks Planning Committee is initiating work to explore the need, the desirability, the advisability of placing two or three or four additional benches around the walking track in the park, placing the benches on poured concrete pads. The exploration is gonna include uh, discussing this throughout the community, getting advice from various people, uh, looking at different designs, work through this, uh, there's no rush for us to do this. We're not trying to push something here. We want to work through this and, and see if this is really something that can add to the park. If it can, then we want it planned and constructed in, in the, the best of way we can manage. Um, part of this is going to be also considering the possibilities of uh, you, um, it, dedicating certain benches uh, according to policies and procedures that need to be developed uh, as commemorative or memorial benches. Um, so that's the, in a nutshell, uh, the idea that we're, we're working with here in, in looking at putting some additional benches around the uh, walking path in the park. Okay. On a separate matter just to quickly conclude a conversation here um, a, a person in the community did reach out to me and asked about the removal uh that's taking place of the old swing set right uh we had a polite respectful conversation it didn't last very long i simply noted that the the with the new playground we had a very good swing set there and with the old swing set we were noticing that there were concerns in a number of different ways and left it at that i 
left it with, if you have more questions, don't hesitate to get back to me. I believe that they were just, you know, they just were curious. I answered a question and we're done. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we've got the approval of communications committee chair and vice chair. Uh, why don't they appoint their own chairman and vice chair? I mean, I think the assumption was that they needed to be, they needed to be appointed just like the other boards do. On the uh, as side. members, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I think so. They're looking at chair and vice chairs as the only official appointed members. I think everybody else is going to be on a volunteer basis. Okay. So, but um, I'd make a motion to approve Lindsey Kuhn as chair and member of the communications committee officially. At this time, the communication committee does not have a uh, designee as vice chair, but they have selected Molly Snodgrass as an alternate. Okay. Um, so you have, we have two official members of the committee right there. Okay. Second. So, all right. All those in favor, aye. 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 Okay. We're going to do executive session here shortly. Any comments? Yeah. I wanted to thank several members who helped out with uh, Harlem Concert Day Festival. Lisa helped a lot with getting the uh, craft reception room there. We write emails to and forth after every festival, and we were very grateful for having the craft receptacle dumpster. I also wanted to mention that the maintenance department was very helpful. We built a brand new bridge for crossing that ditch. They mowed, uh, made it look great. Uh, they helped us move the bleachers around, and it is very appreciative of the maintenance guys. Okay. You guys are getting all kinds of praise tonight. <laughs> <laughs> well deserved. Aren't you session. glad you sat here for three yeah. hours? <laughs> Party start tomorrow, and the food truck. The food truck will be spit sausage truck. So come get your Bahama mamas and. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. That's where I'll be going out. Okay. For that's far. Bob. Oh. We know we're up for that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, couple things. One is that I don't know if the trustees know the engineer from the city of Columbus who was responsible for the project for the last three five years passed away unexpectedly. Uh, Memorial Day weekend. Um, his supervisor at this point has taken over uh, the project. They still expect uh, that it to be completed in the term was in the spring of 2026. Um, there's been a couple of hiccups, but they expect that they're working through those. So that's one item you get for information purposes. The other item is, um, and I know in the past, the trustees uh, talked about some type of construction of an additional facility. Um, you know, in the winter, Jason has to either go behind the building or come over here sales, if they have to do restroom facilities. Um, we converted a mini kitchen to Lisa's office. Uh, we are talking about it, potentially additional personnel. And I just wondered if the trustees were going to be exploring uh, the possibility of additional space. Yeah. We're starting to consider it. No. It's going to be a process, it's going to be an expensive one. Yeah. But it's going to get more expensive the longer we delay it. That's a good example. This, I'll go backwards a little bit here in the meeting. The ditch petition hearing, I don't know if you heard the numbers or not. It was started in 2019. And because of a couple of years out from COVID and a shortage of personnel at conservation for designing, the price of the project doubled. And it was sticker shock on the folks here in the village. But and it's not going to get any better. I mean, labor is not going to get any cheaper, especially some materials might, but anyway, thank you. Okay. Anybody else before we do executive? Okay. I have a motion for executive session. So moved. Uh, well, we 
of it or you want the details? Yes, please. Yeah. You want to go home? Please sign my gate. I got packed up. Please sign my stuff. I'm ready. Sorry. Hey. Sorry. All right. So I'm going to make this motion. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, I move to move to executive session at 950 to conference with the public body's attorney concerning pending or imminent court action by division G3 of section 121.22 of the revised code. Court action is pending if a suit has been commenced. Court action is imminent if it is on the point of happening or impended. Second. Yeah, just email. Uh, roll call vote, that's, please. That's how they give me the email. So yeah. Aye. 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 Yeah, just the next night we say. Oh. Hang on. Is anybody invited? I missed my opportunity to ask a question into the staff yeah. because it was so quickly yeah. faded. Yeah. Do you want to say something? Yeah. I raised my hand and nobody told me. Oh, so I'm working with Fudge. I didn't feel 100%. I mean, that's the process. Everybody left. This is planned. Oh, to explain the framework of the strategy. I don't think they're actually planned. They just have to take the whole thing. They have to take the whole thing. They have to take the whole thing. Then brought the center in a form of light. So I mean, I think that's where a lot of confusion is with the township. Yes. And the most important part. We were too fast for. Thank you. Okay. I have a motion to come out of executive session. So moved. Second. Second. Roll call, please. Jackson. Hi. Holiday. Hi. Trainer. Hi. Hi. Okay. Uh, did Mike Cannon leave? That's not. Sorry, what? Okay. Uh, availability for a meet with Corey, 4, 11, or 18, 7 p.m., the Wednesdays of September. 4, 11, or 18 at 7 p.m.? Yeah. Okay. Just let us know. All right, uh, we've got checks to sign. Anything else other than checks? I have stuff to sign. What? I'm sorry? I got all kinds of stuff, stuff to sign. Meeting okay. Well, meeting wise, no, yep. okay. no further business. I move to adjourn 956. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor, aye. 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 Meeting adjourned at 956. Okay. I like